Let me start we'll streaming. And it's recording, and I think we're good whenever. There we go. We're good. All right. Okay, everybody. Welcome back to uh, Wicked City. We're still in the middle of story one. What is a thief? Uh, at the last session, uh, I posted the detailed recap uh, in the Discord just now, so it should be one of the most recent messages. Um, you were all recruited by a mysterious man named Galanis who wears a cowboy hat, uh, but everybody in this world just calls it the 10-gallon hat. Um, uh, the thing about Galanis is he wasn't supposed to hang out with y'all all that much. He was supposed to put the box on the table and then leave, but then I forgot to do that. And having him just walk away would have been weird. So he just stood around and watched y'all. Uh, he's going to be a bit more uh, normal this session. But he recruited you all, said that he worked for an organization called the Golden Keys. Uh, I called it the Golden Vault, but I'm changing it now to the Golden Keys. Uh, and that they wanted to test you. Uh, the test was a message in the box. The message said to go and visit a woman named Dr. Uh, Dr. Daniels at El Tortel U Villa. Uh, the villa is a uh, academic uh, area funded by nobles. Uh, it has a museum of natural history. It has a college of sciences, a college of nature, a college of magic. Uh, it's just a place of learning uh, in the sea ward of Waterdeep. Um, when you found her, she said that she was being fired because she had tried to break into the museum and steal the new exhibit, the Merkmeyer Stone. She says that the Merkmeyer Stone is actually an eldritch egg that will feed off the energy of people visiting it at the museum and will eventually hatch and wreak havoc on, havoc on the museum. Uh, she has no proof for this. Uh, she says that she did occult research and that she tried to cast spells on it. Uh, uh, she was a bit confused because I forgot to mention some of those things to y'all, but she cast spells on it, but she wasn't really familiar with that magic, so it wasn't definitive. She did research on it, but it's so ancient that it wasn't really definitive. She says that it eats her dreams and gives her a sense of dread, but magic spells have been cast on her, and there's no definitive uh, magical energy messing with her. So she was dismissed as a crazy person. And she also implied that they wanted to have this big exhibit and throw this big fancy gala so that they could get some more uh, nobles to fund the museum. So it kind of has this political bent to it as well. Um, she said that if y'all stole the stone and brought it to her, she would encase it in amber and carve eldritch runes onto it that would halt the growing process of whatever was inside. She said that she had two tickets to the gala that she uh, had before she was fired. She gave them to you. Um, Y'all decided to go back to the Yawning Portal, and you would plan the heist tomorrow. Um, Destry uh, went to a nearby house, the house of a lady named Caitlin Cas Castellanter. Yeah, I think that's the name he gave me, um, who turned out to be his aunt. He asked her to delay the gala to pull the stone or to add some more security. And she implied that he was a black sheep of the family, and she didn't really take him all that seriously, but she treated him kindly and said that he would let, that she would let him look at the stone the next day. She also gave him two tickets to the gala and invited him to come and uh, be normal for once, was the implication. Um, some other things. Uh, Inchi, whenever you want, you can go to the Thieves Guild Hall and talk to Nilfor the mind flayer who told you to rob uh, the guards at Castle Antler Manor, uh, the thing that ended you up in jail for two months. You don't have to do that this session. You can do that, uh, you know, later. Uh, Destry is not here, but he is in debt 250 gold pieces to a woman named Istrid. Uh, Blinken is researching uh, dragons. Blinken, I told you the wrong name for the dragon staff. It's called the Dragon Staff of Aga Huron. Aga Huron. To you in chat right now. Okay. Okay, got it. Got it. Uh, 
chiaro. Chiaro, chiaro. Um, and I believe. Oh, yeah. And Huel, this is your first time in Waterdeep. You traveled all the way here from Baldur's Gate. You owe 25 gold pieces a week to the used cart salesman who uh, works uh, to the north of the Fields ward, ward, ward in the north of the city. Um, right now, you are all at the Yawning Portal. So go ahead and roll initiative, and let's see who wakes up first. All right. I had to restart my computer. Do you mind rolling for me, DM? I'll be I'll back in roll 20 shortly. Oh. All right, let's go initiative. And she rolled a nine. Fucking roll 20. Now no one's in the turn order. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's from last game. What the fuck? Go get a nine. Blinken or Huel got a four. And she got an eight. So it's going to be Blinken first. Yep. <clears throat> Blinken, you are sleeping uh, with everybody else in Galanis's room uh, in the Yawning Portal. Uh, the Yawning Portal provided a little cot for you to sleep on. It's uh, not like super fancy in quality, but it's good. The bar owner, Dernan, used to be an adventurer back in the day, and he never lets his customers sleep on the floor. Uh, so you've got this nice cot, uh, but as you are uh, sleeping, uh, you're dreaming, but something interrupts your dream. The sound of chains being drugged along the wooden floor. And that's not coming from your dream. It's coming from the real world. What do you do? Um, so I know it's coming from the real world then. Um, yes, sir. So I would probably like kind of stir and, you know, open my eyes a bit and figure out and see if, if I could figure out what's going on. Uh, you open your eyes. The room is uh, dark. Uh, you can see that the outside hallway is lit by a uh, dim lamplight. Uh, there's a window in this room. It's cracked open so that you get some fresh air with the five men uh, sleeping in the room. Um, and your eyes haven't adjusted to the darkness yet. Where would you like to focus? Um, I'm going to assume if, if I, I think... Uh, wherever the um, I thought the chains would be, maybe like outside the door or something like towards the door of the the room. See if I could look uh, and see what's going on. You look towards the door. Roll a perception check. Yeah. Perception. Where are we? There you are. Yes. Five. You're looking at the door. There's no movement or shadows uh, changing in the lamplight on in the cracks around it. But you swear you hear the sound of those chains from behind you by the window. Mm. You turn around and nothing's there. But as you turn, you can see that Galanis is sitting upright in his bed, looking towards the window. His face has always been so calm, charming, genuine, even though he's been acting mysterious. But right now, he looks scared. He is covered in beady sweat, and he's clutching his uh, fist to his chest. But he is making no noise. I kind of do a hush whisper. Is it, Atlantis, what are you doing? What's going on? Oh, I mean, sleep eludes me tonight, Lincoln. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go hang out in the 
in the hearth there. And maybe some some walking will do me some good. Uh, and he gets up and he's wearing like straight up like an old Western like onesie cloth thing. Okay. Uh, from like Back to the Future 3. Yeah. Uh, and he puts on some uh, leather slippers. Uh, and he uh, gently uh, and without a sound, you notice, like completely, no sound at all. He walks across the room. Uh, he opens the door. The door makes a sound, but he does not. And he closes the door uh, and walks outside. You can choose to follow him, leave him be, uh, or go talk to him. What would you like to do? Um, well, I probably would follow him and um, see what's going on. But first, I would probably check that window and see if I could uh, or, you know, orientate where this chain sound is, because it's now making me curious. Looking around the window, and staying there for a minute, you notice it's not a very windy night. So uh, there's not a lot of wind causing movement or like chimes or uh, pieces of wood to hit each other or things like that. You also look around the window, stick your head out of it. There's no chain decorations anywhere around here either. You cannot identify anything that would have made that noise. All right. Um... I'll scratch my head and I'll, I'm going to look around and just kind of shrug and uh, head out towards wherever um, Alanis will be. I'm going to try to, you know, see what's going on. You want to stealthily follow him or do you want to, uh, like, go up and, like, let him know that you're there and talk to him? Uh, I'll do stealth just to, like, see if he's... Um, Sneaking around somewhere, you know, um, kind of follow him. And if he's just chilling at the hearth or whatever, I'll just, you know, make myself know. Be so I just, oh, for now, I'll stealth. Roll a stealth check, and you're going to contest that with his perception. Okay. God damn it. All these low rolls. Take a screenshot of his character sheet before it disappears. All right. Just my dice. I'm gonna get my dice first. Okay. Um, you uh don't know what he rolled, but you see that uh he was in the hearth, but he walked from that all the way to the door he put on a little coat that was by the wall and uh he walked outside do you continue to follow him um i would imagine at, at the hearth area then there's like uh nobody around right it's kind of quiet yeah it's the dead of night uh the yawning portal isn't open 24 hours a day you know, okay. it's an inn also for adventurers. Durden likes to get his sleep. He likes for his guests to get their sleep. Right. So the bar area closes at 1 a.m. and it reopens at 7. So it's about like 4 o'clock right now, not even dawn. Okay. Um, I will. I think I'll, I'll, I'll follow him since he's just walking outside. I'm just kind of making sure he's okay, type of thing. <laughs> All right. You stick, uh, you walk out the door, and you notice that he has walked over to the stable area in the back of the yawning portal. Uh, and he's messing around with uh, what you think is a uh, Huel's cart. Um, you remember Huel talking about getting a cart that had a shiny coat of paint, uh, but needed some work. And there's a cart there that looks like it's been freshly painted. Uh, there's torchlight around. Uh, Waterdeep uh, usually has its streets lit by some lamplight, torchlight, or drift globes, which are basically giant or like volleyball sized balls of light that float through the streets at night. Right. So you can see that there's this cart with a fresh coat of paint, but a broken wheel. Like the whole axle has come off on one side. Uh, and Galanis is messing around underneath the seat cushion. And he pulls out a pouch that jingles a little bit. And he reaches into that pouch and he pulls out a golden key. He puts that pouch back under the seat. 
He pats that seat back down, clearly a hiding spot, and he pulls out a golden box from his pocket, and he inserts the key and turns it. And you hear that professional voice that gave you the briefing about Dr. Daniel say, Gee, we really do miss you here. Please come home soon. You're so needed, more than you could know. Waterdeep can wait. All of these adventures that's supposed to be behind us, we have more important things. Come home soon. And then you just see him sit down and kind of stare off at the stars. Hmm, okay. Um, I think with that, I'll probably head back inside. Um, I'm not going to pursue any further for that. Uh, I'll just head inside with that knowledge. <clears throat> okay. It is. Uh, you go back inside. You get back on your cot. Uh, you're thankful again that it's a nice padded cot. Uh, and you think about the things that have happened, and you drift off to sleep. You are awakened a few hours later by the um, Clockworkers Guild. Uh, they go through the streets banging a gong on the hour every hour to help people wake up on time so that they can get to work. It's a nice soft gong uh, here in the sea ward uh, you, or in the trades ward where the yawning portal is. You know, in other places like the docks ward and the field ward, it's a lot louder uh, and uh, more jolting when it brings you awake. Uh, so you wake up, the yawning portal has a bar downstairs, a full kitchen, uh, it has hot baths uh, in the back, uh, anything that you could want to do. Uh, Inshi, you wake up next. What would you like to do uh, this morning in the in the yawning portal? Uh, Inchi was like sleeping at the bottom of the bed like a cat does sometimes. And he Perfect. just kind of wakes wakes up, stretching, uh, stretching his back, his butt, you know, getting accumulated to the morning. And uh, he walks downstairs or to wherever the barkeep is, and he asks him, "Hey, uh, uh, wh where's the dump around here? Y'all got a dumpster?" Um, the bartender is a young human woman with ginger hair, named Bonnie, and she says. Oh, yeah, it's around back. What do you need out of the dumpster, though? Uh, I, you know, I just got some uh, uh, food to throw away, you know? <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, ma'am. And, and she's going to... Yes. <laughs> Roll a deception check. Uh, do. DC uh, 10, so a difficulty of 10. No, no. Sorry, my computer is acting funky. Oh, it's okay. Seven. You got a seven? Mm -hmm. So she goes, oh, oh, well, uh, before you go out there, I was wondering if you would like to Sample the house meal, hmm? the house breakfast. That house, house break. What, what is that? I ain't gonna eat it's no house. Breakfast. It's breakfast for all of us here that work at the yawning portal. Me, Clyde, my brother, my cousin, and Dunning. We all cook a little something at the start of the day to keep us going. And you know what? I am. I'm quite famished today, and you could have mine. Or I'm quite opposite of famished. I'm quite full today, so you could have mine. I missed a lot of that. I think you're uh, kind of like that, timing out. Is that just for... Am I am I good for the other guys, or do I cut out for y'all as well? Uh, every now and then, but it's clear. It's, it's clear on my end. Maybe just because it's slower okay. where you guys are, I don't know. Uh, maybe it I'll reduce this my phone. It might be that my uh, cell service has not been great. So it might be that. Let me switch to a better pair of headphones, too. Okay. 
think that might make the connection more stable. Crazy Brax isn't here yet. Any response from him? I'm, I'm assuming he's taking a plat nap. All right. Hey, can y'all hear me? Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. Okay. So she basically said that uh, house breakfast is this breakfast that the staff cooks for themselves, but she's not feeling very hungry right now, so she'd be happy to give her half of it to you. Oh. Uh, really? I mean, uh, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that off your hands. She says, uh, fantastic, it's uh, salmon omelets today. Uh, the ships are coming in from the harbor, so cheap fish abound. Please, uh, enjoy. Uh, and mm -hmm. she slides you, like, what looks like to be a half of an omelet uh, that has, like, uh, salmon inside of it uh, and an egg and then, like, some greenery on top of it. Uh, and she gives you a glass of water as well. Fish and egg at the same time? Oh, lady, you're too kind. What's your name, miss? My name's Bunny. Bunny? Bonnie. B -O -N. Bonnie. Oh, uh, I, I'm sorry, lady. My, I got sewage in my ears. Uh, it, thank you. I really appreciate this. And, and she just kind of like bare fist of food into his mouth. Uh, mm, she giggles at the good. sewers sewers in your ears thing. Mm. Alright, that, that felt good. Alright, uh, I better go check on my fellows. Uh, uh, you can just stay today, there. But... You can stay there oh. and I'm gonna wake up everybody. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, All then right. I'll... All right, next up is Huel. You wake up uh, in the room in the Yawning Portal. Uh, Destry is the only one there other than you. Uh, what would you like to do first thing in the morning? Huel gets up, does a big stretch, like cracks his back. He's like, oh, and he stumbles into the next room. And just like <laughs> joins everyone early. He just starts smoking on a pipe like a... It's like a wooden pipe. A wooden Before pipe. he got like coffee or breakfast, he's just he's sitting there smoking. All right, uh, Blinken. I'll say that uh, uh, Inchi would have sat next to next to you at a table uh, and stuff. Um, Y'all can have a breakfast. You can have a big old fantasy breakfast of sausage and eggs and stuff. I'll say that it's uh, on Galanis's room tab. Uh, Whenever we're done with this first story, though, we'll start calculating expenses like food and uh, lodging for the night and stuff like that, okay? Yep, got it. And she doesn't say good morning. With a mouthful of food, he just kind of waves at his friends. Yeah, like, he'll just raise his pipe up. He doesn't even say, he just raises it, like... Perfect. Um, Galanis was not in the room when any of y'all woke up, and you also haven't seen him down here in this hearth area. 
so y'all have a little while to eat and role play together, get to know each other if you want. Uh, or if you don't want to do that, I can just skip right on to when he comes in. Um, yeah, I'll uh, start with just kind of like eating my food and kind of looking around, noticing that Galanis isn't around and, um, you know, I'll, I'll say to, to the people, you know, have you, have you, have you seen Galanis around? Galanis? Who's, go oh, oh, that, that, that weird man the other day. Yeah, 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 he was, he was, uh, the one that, uh, gave us this job. He, I think he, he, he left in the middle of the night. I woke up and he just left, so I, I don't know if you noticed anything or not. Uh, I did not. But maybe we'll we like... still share the gold. Mm hmm He was doing, like, that forest water cry. He's, like, half awake. He's, like, one eye's closed, one eye's open. He's looking around. He's, like, I don't see Glennis anywhere. Mm. It's a big yawn, deep smoking. Interesting. Okay. Um, yeah, because he, uh, you know, I was having some weird dream. I had to wake up, um, you know, and then I just saw him, and he's like, oh, pardon me, just walks out. So I didn't know if, uh, you know, if y'all knew what's up. No, I, that's a pretty. I had some pretty crazy dreams. Yeah. yeah. So I want to talk about it. Hmm, okay. I'm kind of curious Is there about another fella? Medium. He's probably upstairs sleeping in his bed. Oh, yeah. That weirdo. What was his name? I forgot. What was... Destry. Destry. He had left, right? He's not with us, actually. I think he stayed with he, us. He had left. Or and did then... he come back after staying on his hands? Yeah, yeah. I remember. He, he came back after talking to his aunt. He's still asleep. Oh, okay. Upstairs. Yeah. I was like, I thought he had stayed there for the night. My bad. Yeah. So. No, no, yeah. He came back after. I left the room as quiet as I could to let him sleep. He looked like a baby. Oh man. Uh, oh. If you also like uh, still puffing on this pipe, like little puffs here, little puffs there, you just like here, like <laughs> Huel, how big is your pipe compared to you? Good question. <clears throat> you know, it's like actually a bit massive because he's a He's a halfling, right? So he's he's smoking a pipe that would be like for a human, so it's like a bit more bigger. It's like a clarinet, oh, or <laughs> it's just a clarinet. Yeah, it looks like a clarinet. Smoking on that flute, you hit it, you <laughs> hit the bong sideways. Yeah, <laughs> that's perfect. I was picturing just a bit bigger, but I like that. Yeah, he actually has, he's holding it in one hand, like balancing on his knee, but it's it's huge. Let's see. All right. So after a while of talking, uh, I'm going to say Brax's character, Destry, uh, comes down uh, and is not feeling uh, very talkative. Uh, he looks like he didn't get a lot of sleep last night. He needs to be here because he's the one that talked his aunt into getting him into the museum. So I'm just going to play him as not very talkative. Uh, okay. That's okay with everybody. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, shortly after that, uh, Galanis uh, comes back in uh, through the front door of the Yawning Portal. He is dressed exactly as he was yesterday in those fine clothes that have clearly been repaired uh, in patchwork with rougher materials. That weathered 10 gallon hat uh, and a very short chin strap beard along his jawline. He comes over to the table and he says, Body my usual morning order, one cafe of water. Or one cafe of uh, piping black coffee and one bottle of fire wine whiskey. Thank you very much. And he sits down at the table and he says, Well, good morning, crew. How'd all y'all sleep? Uh, uh, pretty good. Thanks for the bed. And, uh, and she just kind of stuffs more egg into his mouth. There you go, man. That's the good life right there. <clears throat> fine bed, fine food. 
and new companions. So, gentlemen, uh, I want to talk to you about a few things. One, I was sensing some hesitation from all of you. So I know I said that I pay 25 gold pieces each on completion of, of this operation. I'm going to up that to 50 gold pieces each. And she he drops gonna, his egg. Yeah, he was going to blow into the pipe and, like the ash goes flying. He's like... <laughs> 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 oh. 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 He said 50, right? Not 15 <laughs> extra? You mean 50, 50 big ones? Five goose egg gold dragon in your hand upon completion of the mission. But I went out. I did some of my own research last night. Talked to a few people. Put on a few masks. I believe we have even less time than Dr. Daniels believes. I believe we have tonight. And we have, well, we have today. And we have tomorrow. Steal the stone. So we are up in the reward. But we're up in the timetable. Is everybody still on board with that? Yeah, I think uh, that will do. We just need information and, uh, you know, make sure the place is good. So we'll, uh, I mean, I look at the party and you know, I go, we, we should probably, you know, get to the museum and see what we could see, you know, try to figure out if it's, you know, doable to get in there and all that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For, uh, for 50 gold, yeah, I, I'm right on that. Now, look, I, I said it last night sometime that uh, Nilhor, uh, my boss over at uh, uh, Xanathor Guild, uh, he is telling me to steal a key for a castellator. castellator. I, I don't remember what the name was, but I saw her name on that museum. M maybe there's some information we could get there? I'm not quite sure, mm. but I've gotten in with them. I encourage you to uh, pursue every avenue you can. I, however, will not be joining you. I have some things that I need to take care of in this city, and I got to get out. My time here is running short. I've overstayed my welcome on this plane. So, I will be at the gala tonight, hobnobbing with the rich folks in a disguise. I have my own things to do. I trust that this job is simple enough that all of you working together will be able to accomplish it. Remember, you don't have to be the good guys. You just can't let bad things happen. That's it. Okay? Yeah, sure, whatever, man. I, uh, yeah, it, like it will nod about this. I mean, like, yeah. Well, strange man, thank you for the bed. My sweetest Bonnie over here, thank you for the egg and the fish. Uh, I think we're ready to go and stop this, uh, and he kind of finger quotes these, uh, this bad thing over here. He gives you, like, a little two-finger salute, and then Bonnie brings over his coffee and his whiskey, and he just pours them all in the same container and starts drinking out of it. That's a man right there. Uh, as y'all are getting up to leave, uh, he takes out um, a little uh, uh, pouch out of his coat, and he ruffles through it, and uh, uh, Blinken, you had the highest initiative, you see that in that pouch is a notebook and a blue stone. <clears throat> you remember that blue stone. Uh, NG has seen it, uh, Huel has seen it, and you've seen him mess with it. It's the stone that appears to mess with memory. But he takes out that little notebook, and a little uh, piece of lead graphite, and he starts etching in it as y'all get up to leave the table. Uh, speaking of which, I had a question about that from last time. It was Inchi's dream yeah. about the dragon hand that he does not remember, but he does remember a man standing over him with that stone after he woke up, right? Yes. So it wasn't really a dream. He was describing something to you, and you can't remember him describing it to you. It's like uh, you got out of jail, and he said, hey, Inchi, and he shook your hand and started talking to you about something, and you can't remember anything he said until he took his hand off of you. Okay, so the most, the most significant thing I would remember is just that stone in his hand? Yes, something weird happened with your memory, and you noticed that he was holding his, that stone in his hand 
while he was doing it. it. Okay, I'm good. All right. Uh, anything else y'all want to do with the yawning portal, or y'all want to be on your way? Uh, no, I think I th for me, I, I think uh, Lincoln wants to just because uh, you know it has to be early enough to go to the museum, so he, he wants to head over to the museum and see if uh, we could at least scout it out, see what's going on there. Okay, uh, is that where everybody else wants to go as well? Because uh, y'all y'all can do anything. You can go talk to your contacts. You can go get supplies. Uh, you can try to poke around wherever you want. Uh, and she just kind of uh, smiles and waves at Bonnie, who he has uh, affection for just because of that fish egg. But then he tells right behind... Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Skitza. What was your character's name again? Uh, Blinken. Uh, he just trails right behind Blinken. Bye, Bonnie. Bye, Inchi. Or bye, Inchi. All right. So uh, y'all get out into the city. The early morning is filled with people making their way uh, to and from their places of employment. You see peasants uh, uh, already pulling in uh, produce that they had started pulling and tilling from the earth a few hours before. Uh, you see brick make you see uh, uh, textile people, cloth makers, people that dye things for a living, all going on their way to work. You see people selling food out of carts. Uh, horses travel down the streets. Uh, there are members of the Street Watchers Guild that direct uh, horse traffic and buggy traffic around the city. Uh, there's uh, signs that point you back the way you came the day before to the north of the city, to the Sea Ward, towards El Torchal Villa. El Tortal Villa is a noble villa uh, that has many things in it, including the uh, uh, College of History and the Museum of uh, Nature, uh, which is where y'all are going. So what did y'all want to do here first? Um, well, since uh, I'm, I'm assuming it's, uh, what time is it now? Is it close to opening time or is it opening time for the museum? Uh, museums opening hours. Oh, I wrote them down. Like ten a.m. or something. Like ten to four. Yeah. Yeah. 10 10. So I'll say it's about like eight ish a.m. now. So y'all have two hours. Uh, we can just skip right to that, or uh, yeah, we can just skip right to that. Y'all hang out uh around the villa uh until it opens. Um. Okay. Uh, y'all can see the the city map along with the plan that Dr. Daniels gave you, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. Yes, okay. All right, I'm going to drag you over to the museum map now. All right. Can everyone see the uh, what looks like a battle map with some areas of it blacked out, and then uh, Doctor Cassie's hand-drawn one on the other side? Uh, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Nice. Okay, good. And this is actually working. Those blacked-out areas are fog of war. Uh, you explore them. I'll light them up for you. Why can't I make this bigger? All right, so did y'all want to do uh, anything special or like literally just walk in when it opens like you're a member of the public? Um, for me, uh, Blinken, he's going, he, he basically has the idea of just walking in like normal and he wants to like scope out the area, see how people are and um, you see, notice And she was things. explicitly following, following Lincoln, so he's going to tug on his uh, sleeve and say, Lincoln. Lincoln, what? what's fun here? 
What? What? What's the plan here? I was gonna say like a few minutes before we got there, could we have broken up into like twos? Like I'll go with uh, yeah, sleepy. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, that's Destry. Fine. Destry. Yeah. yeah. Just so it doesn't look like we're all together, you know what I mean? Like, them two will arrive, and then, like, me and Destry will arrive, like, five minutes after. Just so it's, you know, we're not, we're all, we're not all walking as a group. Yeah, yeah. Yes, That's... perfect. Sweet, so, yeah, like, you two are together, perfect. and then second Sounds after, me and, me and Destry would pull up. All right, it is two silver pieces per person to enter the museum. Okay. Uh, who has the money to pay for that? Uh... Hey. Hey, blinking! I don't got no cash right now. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll pay for it. Okay. Thanks, I guess. I can't find my starting gold, but I'm pretty sure I have like a bit. Yeah, you should have a bit, depending on your backstory. Yeah, I, I got some Depending money. on your background, I mean. It'll cost you one gold piece, one gold dragon to get everybody in. Um, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll be like, look, I I got some money left over from the job, so I'll, 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 to, I'll toss a, a gold. I'll sacrifice All a gold right. piece. The you would technically get some silver pieces back in change for that. Um, I think we have enough things to track if, uh, uh, so I won't be tracking silver and copper, uh, pieces, but if y'all want me to, I will. It's there uh, on the sheet, but, like, it's not necessarily necessary. No, no, I don't think it's Either necessary. or, like, if you just want to deal, like, round it to, the, you know, just ones, one gold piece, that's 100% yeah. fine. Because you start getting yeah. into, yeah, you know, wanna... silver, bronze, like, the... Yeah. Copper pieces, I silver. And... To the... I want to eventually get to the point where y'all could theoretically like own a business, and that would be like hundreds or thousands of gold pieces, and silver won't really matter as much at that point. Yeah. yeah I'm not even sure games use EP. Most games I've played, they don't use it. Then, you know, mostly just gold. In the document, there is a picture of what all the water deep coins look like, though. They're pretty cool. Yeah, like a gold dragon's actually different from a gold piece, right? Like, yeah, yeah, it's like a it's bit. water deep uh, city standard. Uh, if actually, Huel, you should have uh, technically less gold than everybody else because your Baldarian yeah. coins would be less valuable. Oh actually, dang yeah, it! Fuck you! I'm gonna do that to you. Yeah, <laughs> remove uh, two gold pieces. Oh, inflation's crazy out here. It's the fucking standard, dude. PG's got to catch up. Hey, and she has oh. nothing. You so you're not you ain't the pro one, dude. It's <laughs> good. Okay, so who wanted to go in first? It seems like them two are like blinking and like I'm oh. like I'm legitimately like trailing behind Blinken. Okay. What's your character's name, Sean? Inchi. 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 Sorry. All right. Walking up the steps of the museum, you see that the facade of the El Turchel, El Turchel Villa uh, Museum of Natural History hosts enormous columns and elegant archways hewn from marble. Cosmopolitan visitors, cosmopolitan visitors bustle around the entrance, uh, including uh, uh, nobles in their fancy uh, outfits, along with uh, common people that were able to pay the two silver pieces to get in. The first area you come to is the Grand Entrance. Statues depicting robed human women flank the sides of this public mingling space, which boasts a marble column in the center. The museum's information desk is situated just inside the front doors. To the north is a grand staircase draped in carpet. So Blinken and Inchi, y'all are the first to walk in. You would have paid the guards by the door to get in. So all these people here that are labeled uh, noble or the picture of the person with the green collar, that's just a civilian. Uh, all the ones in black cloaks are guards. 
Oh, Blake, and this place is pretty what fancy. Y'all like to do? Um, yeah, I would, I would uh, converse with, uh, you know, with Inchi and be like, yeah, it's it's a fancy place. Uh, you know, I'm just kind of pointing around. Look at that fancy artwork there and there, and I'm like. You know, trying to have an open conversation, but at the same time, I'm going to be looking around and, um, you know, kind of scoping the place to see how the guards are, like how how if there's like a patrol pattern or if they're just kind of standing there, um, type of thing, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of like nonchalantly having this. Runoff conversation with Inchi while I'm trying to pay attention to the security. Inchi doesn't care about the artwork, but he is like very distracted by the sculptures. He appreciates those, and he's kind of a little distracted. Oh, Whoa. okay. Uh, Inchi, what? Yeah, these statues, man, they're really cool. These human women. Uh, they don't have a display name or anything like that. They're actually just like decoration, not uh, exhibits, but you really like them, and that's cool. Roll an Arcana check. Okay. <clears throat> Damn it. Sorry, I got a proficiency in it, but I got seven. Uh, you look at these statues, and you assume that they're so perfect, they must have been carved with magic. But you can't uh, uh, detect what kind it must have been. Uh, Blinken uh, and Inchi, there's the information desk uh, here right by the door. Uh, it has a poster, uh, a scroll uh, that has drawn on it. Uh, Merkmeyer Gala tonight. Tickets sold out. Um, there are two guards in this room, Blinken, that you notice. There's one to the left in the center. And one to the right in the center. Yeah. And they march back and forth to that big marble column in the center. And they march back to the edge of the room. You see that uh, to the left and right, there are hallways. And you can see uh, lights in the other rooms. Uh, you can see other guests mingling through those. And then you can see over here on the right side, there are doors uh, that have uh, little like nameplates on them that say uh, where they so maybe if you got closer, you could read what they are. And then to the north, there is uh, the grand staircase leading to the upper floors. Okay. I'm sorry, I need to blow my nose. I can barely breathe. Yeah, no worries. Um. Okay. So eventually, you know, I'll I'll, I'll strike up the conversation with Inchi, I'm, you know, I guess I'm, my character doesn't really care if he's paying attention. The whole point is just trying to, you know, uh, fit in with the crowd. If there's a crowd, it'll be like, yeah, this this looks pretty nice here. And then I'm like looking, uh, at, I guess, at the doors on the right, see what they say while I'm like walking around. Okay. So the doors on the right, the one on the bottom says curator, uh, Al, Alda Allen, the okay. curator that Dr. Daniels told you about, right. the one that seems to have it out for Dr. Daniels. The room right above that is the records room. And then you try to get up closer to that north room to see what it was. Go ahead and roll a, ah, oh, what would this be? A performance check. Both of you do it together. All right, one second. Okay, performance. Go to 14. Nice. Oh, look who decided to show up. Hey. Look who came to the game. What's up, Rex? Good to see you. I'm going to roll real mean, dice. Here this entire time? Yeah, well, I've been recording, so that's not true. Um, I, I rolled I'm uh, a, oh, a five, so I'm going to be rolling real dice now because I hate this. 
<laughs> yeah, man, go ahead. I'm fine with that. Uh, Inshi, you got a really good roll, so you uh, managed to get up to that top area. However, a guard stops you blinking and says, Oi, mate, you don't need to be over here. Move along. Oh, sorry, sorry. That's uh, Inchi, I'm sorry. Yeah. Inshi, you get the idea that it'd be a good idea to move along too, but being a few steps closer to it, you can see that that top room is the guard's room. Uh, Inchi doesn't notice that he lost... Uh... Uh, his, his friend until he actually got to the room. So they're gonna like, eh? Where'd you go? Eh. And then uh, I you see that a guard's shooing him away. Uh, and she just kind of waves, thinking that he just left. He just kind of voluntarily left, and she and he just wants to peek into the into the room that that says the guard's room. All right, let me use the bathroom, and then we'll talk about what happens. All right. I have to prep a lot of my spells in advance. It gives me a chance to do that real quick. True, yeah. Evening, Brax. Hi. Quick recap. We woke up. I smoked a pipe. And she ate breakfast. And we made our way over here. For the gal. Took an hour to smoke a pipe and get here. Yes. We were good people and we waited for you for a few minutes, so we didn't like. Well, it was like 9 15 when we started, so technically it was 45 minutes of me smoking a pipe. Oh, and she eating nine, eggs. It's 9 06. I see her. So if you started at 9 15, then fucking Christ. Eight I don't need your back talk, Brax. I love you. Give me the No, I'm kidding. Like I said, you, just didn't, you didn't miss much. For those who are watching, this is a common occurrence. Uh, Kirby does bully me. Uh, he's very oh, mean. He doesn't. Go, go to his Discord. Uh, go to his uh, Twitch and uh, call him Stinky. No, I'm, I'm kidding. Do go to his Twitch though. Uh, no. Um, yeah, I kind of forgot to set an alarm. It's alright. Like I said, nothing, nothing too crazy happened, so... Yeah. No, I was lying in bed, and I'm like, I'm gonna take a quick little nap before d and I wake up, look at my phone, there's like four messages, and I'm like, ah! <laughs> oh, one more thing. Galanis was being all sus in the middle of the night. Yeah. And then he left. I don't know that in character, but that, that did happen. I mean... Huel, Huel doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I assume y'all would talk to each other, like, while you're walking to where you're going. Yeah, um, and, uh, Inch Inchi is with Blinken, uh, Huel is with, uh, whatever Brax's name was, forget. Death Tree. Death Tree. Death Tree. Death Tree. Death Tree. Death. Death. Dickhead. Dickhead. Got it. Like death? Like death like that? Dick head. No, death. Asshole. Dick desk, head. Desk. Desk. Bitch. Okay. Boy. It's, it's with a T. Oh, I got you. Stupid dumbass. <laughs> got it. Okay. And she, you try to take advantage of the guard's distractions. And you reach for the doorknob. As you're doing that, Huel and Destry walk in to the El Tortor Museum of Natural History. Destry, it cost uh, two silver pieces for each of you to get in. Uh, Brax was kind of, or Blinken was kind enough to pay that for y'all. <clears throat> y'all are just here scoping out the museum. It is about 10 a.m. The museum just opened, but it's already busy, and people are buzzing about the gala that's going to happen later tonight. Or yeah, I'm gonna break like a, to I'm gonna break a bottle I found on the side of the road, like, and take the bottom circle of it, uh -huh. the bottom broken half, and put it like where my eye is. So it looks like a monocle. I'm gonna act all fancy and grab a stick from Ooh. the bush. Like we gotta, we gotta blend in. We gotta blend in, Destry. I got like this monocle made of broken glass, like stuck in my eye. 
Yeah. I'm going to pull hey. the monocle hey. out of his eye, flip it to where the bottom is, like the flat side that's not all sharp, <laughs> and place that side on his eye and be like, if you're going to, uh, you know, wear it, wear it properly. And then you'll, like, you'll see his head flop back and like a bobblehead for a second. He's like, yeah, yeah, that, that's kind of smart. Fixes it properly. A little little trail of blood goes down because, uh, you know, you jammed it into your face. Yeah, there's like that sort of <laughs> couple, of, like, it looks like chew marks, like dots along, like connect the dots puzzle on his face. Just for a clarification, Huel, how are you dressed? Uh, having just arrived in the city yesterday after this month-long trek from Baldur's Gate. He's just wearing some basic common clothes, like, maybe look kind of rough from the trip journey over, like, a little bit dirty. Not, like, mm -hmm. stink cloud dirty, but there's, like, a little bit of dirt. A couple patches missing, mm -hmm. you know, like, holes in the knees, okay. like, the boots look rough, you know, like, been a couple months travel over. All right. And, um, uh, uh, Destry, what kind of clothes does Destry cast wear? Okay, so, uh, Destry, if my sheet will open one day, uh, if I remember correctly, I am wearing, uh, fine clothes like like nice not 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 like noble looking clothes like they're not that nice but they're nice enough to be like okay you know he puts a little thought into his uh his wear um if you actually look at my character token uh which i should be able to show to the party by zooming it in or my character art specifically uh nope should be not letting on the map yeah but you can window, zoom in infinitely on roll 20, yeah. You can see all the detail. I should be able to also just drop the art into the Discord if you wanted to take a gander at it that way. Yes. There we go. Yes. So, Destry, you already uh, look like you fit in with uh, yeah, some of I'm, the nobles that are milling about. I'm well dressed. Uh, you know, I, I do have like a little bit of a rugged look because of the, the short beard and the long hair. Like, I'm not well groomed, mm -hmm. but I'm well dressed. Um, Perfect. And, uh, it, yeah, I'm I'm just looking like that right now. Okay, so walking into the museum, in this first room, there are two guards on the left and right side that patrol to the left and right side of the rooms, then back towards the middle. There are various guests milling about. There are posters uh, everywhere painted with signs for the Merck Meyerstone Gala unveiling tonight. To the left, there are hallways to different rooms. To the north, there's a staircase to the upper floors. And to the right, there are three closed doors, one for the curator's office, one for the records room, and one for the guards room. What would you all like to do? Well, I uh, believe my aunt or grandmother or whoever, I forgot, uh, gave me explicit permission to come in and start an investigation prior to the bala, uh, gala. Yes. Gala. Uh, she said that you could look into it as long as you kept it all in the family, and she would try to talk to the curator about getting you a chance to see the stone yourself. Okay. Uh, no, no. So that's what I'm going to do. So you're going to, what, try to talk to the curator? Uh, yes, I'm going to make my way to the curator. I'm going to tell my friend here to uh, go look around, uh, and I'm going to, uh, I believe I explained to the party that what happened the other session, that, like, I'm a, yes. I am got permission to go do this, but I have to go do this. Or no. Yeah. 
yeah, no, yeah, but that's fine. she gave you, you two passes, right? To the gala. Yeah. To the gala. So would that pass count for me? Like, cause am I the? Well, we're not at the gala yet. We're at the pre-show. Oh. Yeah, you're here during yeah, yeah, normal yeah. business hours. The gala is at seven p.m. tonight. It is ten a.m. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, you could you could also Destry try to sweet talk uh, your way into letting Huel come with you. No, because I know that they're gonna talk like uh, tell my aunt what happened, and she said to keep it into the family. Excellent. Or like, I love it. Yeah, I love gotcha. a choice based in role play. All right, so we'll do Destry first. Destry, you knock on the office, uh, and you hear, "Go to the information desk. I will not answer your questions." Wait, who said this to me? You knocked on the curator's door, and you heard a voice on the other side say, Go away! Go to the front desk. They will answer your questions. That's nice and all, but, uh... Fuck, what was the last name? I had it written down, but I can't find it. Uh... Miss Castle... Miss uh, Castellanter... Uh... Was meant to have spoken to you uh, for me. It's her nephew. Says, oh, ooh, a castle answer. Uh, and you hear the sound of like something like tip over and roll on the floor, and then you hear steps hurriedly rush towards the door, and a woman opens the door. It is an elven woman with red hair, slender body. She has a uh, clipboard with a piece of parchment on it. Uh, in one hand, and she's wearing an elegant blue dress. And she opens the door, and you can see inside her office. There we go. Look at the fog of war working. I'm going to get the description of the office. A solid oak desk stands on a plush carpet in the center of this office. In the southeast corner, a strange human-sized doll is poised in an elaborate dress on a couch. There are also uh, oak wooden cabinets that have like records and such inside them. There are pieces of parchment and scrolls uh, on the desk, and there is also an elegant black dress uh, hanging on one of the walls, clearly, for the gala tonight. And she says, yes, Destry Castellanza, pleasure to meet you. And she reaches out a bony hand uh, for a handshake. Uh, I'll go in for a handshake, sure. Says, yes, I'm told that you had some security concerns about the gala tonight. Yes, yes. Um, as you are aware, because uh, of the rumors that I, uh, have heard that there is a issue with one of the objects being shown during the gala tonight. She says, mm, all of our uh, displays uh, on tonight come to us straight from the El Torcho University, fresh from the Mathmire site dig. They are of pristine origin. There is absolutely Nothing to worry about. They have been cleaned. They are ready to go on display. People have been working around them nonstop. The biggest safety concern tonight is too many people. The Fire Watchers Guild says that we can only have 20 people in the room. I think we can get it up to 25, maybe even 30. We'll see. That sounds nice and all, but I believe the exhibit itself is the problem. She uh, eyes eyes you as if uh, she's kind of annoyed that you're still pressing on this. Did my aunt speak to you or not? She did. You had concerns about the Merkmire Stone, but I promise you, those are mere rumors put up by a now fired ex by a now fired employee who was clearly just trying to get back at us. I have little concern about the employee. I'm more concerned about the Castellanter name. 
if something happened and that stone did happen to in fact be I don't even know what the rumors said. All I know is that it could be dangerous and lead to many a deaths. And if that happened during the gala tonight, do you know how bad that would hurt the name? Do you know how much money we would lose? You don't want that over your head, do you? She says, I assure you, Mr. Casalenta, your concerns are the same as mine. If this museum goes down, so does mine. So does my reputation. I would not want anything at all like that to happen. Please. Then you will have please, no problem with put me all investigating these... into this. She purses put both her our lips minds you, at uh, ease. Inter... She purses her lips as you, like, interrupt her. Uh, but she, you're a noble, so she's being very nice. Uh, you're used to getting treated like that. And she says, yes, yes, sir, of course. Uh, please, uh, if you would, let us get a guard, and we will go up to the Merkmeyer exhibit together so that you can put your noble eyes upon this object yourself. There is no need for a guard. There is no danger here. I believe in the security of the museum. There is no need for concern there. It'll be a quick in and out. You do not need to th uh, fret. And plus, there's no need for concern about security over the gem itself. Again, I have no intent on letting any harm come to the museum nor its ocu uh, occupi occupants or contents. Says, you have, you have your things. You must do. I have my things. I must do. A god is to be around my stone at all times. There should be one up there already. Fine, fine. Let us go. And she walk, begins to walk out of her office, and then she says, "Oh!" And she turns around, and she scuttles back in on her high heels and she picks up her little like clutch purse bag and she throws it around her shoulder and she begins walking out of the office again Huel, what did you want to do when you entered the museum of natural history i'd be kind of just trying to look around at, like count like the personnel like exit ways and kind of just like mossing around hanging around Make a perception check. Fifteen? Thirteen on the dice, and then two from the mode. Okay, just a second. All right, so like in this area, uh, you you can see the two guards up here. Uh in this uh, room, really well, there's two guards in the center. Uh, patrol. You can see that in this hallway area, uh, to the left of you, occasionally a guard walks down into this room here. Oops. In that area that I just revealed, you see a guard walk down here and turn around and begin walking north again. You can see that there are two statues uh, in the entrance way that are very elegantly carved. They do not appear to be any display or exhibit of the museum. They are of two robed women, human women. That's really all you can tell in this area, but I'm going to let you keep that 15 perception check because it's really good. Uh, is there any room or area of this museum that you wanted to travel to? Oh, because I'm just looking for like exit uh, ways, you know what I mean? Or like some. entrance ways for us to get in. Um, in this area, there really isn't one. There's just the two doors that you came in through and then the stairway to the north. You'd have to explore 
different parts of this museum to discover its secrets. I'm going to really quickly change it to some sweatpants because it's like really hot in my room. Uh, Y'all can control your tokens, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay, good. Yeah. Um, all right, so Huel, you can go to the rooms on the left, uh, which appear to be the start of, like, the exhibits or other areas of the museum, or you can travel uh, to the second floor and maybe see if uh, you can spot any ins and outs up there. Yeah, I'll try to go to the second floor. You can try to just look for like windows and All right. oddities and stuff like that. All right. Yeah, keep looking out for that. There aren't any in this area, but there will be. All right. We're going to go back to Sinji and Blinken. Uh, Blinken, you are uh, still kind of arguing with that guard. Sinji, you were going to go for this door to the guards area to see if you could open it. Roll a stealth check or a sleight of hand check. All right, uh, but that is uh, in she, by the way. My bad. In she. I keep calling you, and I keep calling you Sinji from uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion. Yeah, it, it sounds similar. Uh, stealth. <laughs> no, uh, sleight of hand. Oh, okay. My bad. Damn, that's good stealth. <laughs> okay. Uh, one. No. No. Oh, no. Not the one. Uh, and you just got to open the door like uh, a. a, a he's like, he audibly just says no, a. Uh, no, what, what's I, going on in here? I, okay. I, yeah. No. <laughs> you 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 reach for fuck. And uh, you start saying, hey, hey, what's going on here before you even fucking turn the knob? Uh, so the guard turns around and sees that first. Then you turn the knob and it's locked and you try to turn it a little bit further and you see some kind of magical energy emanate from that locked door and you hear a soft <laughs> and the other guard in the room uh, turns and looks around and sees that the first guard is starting his way towards you, and he begins walking toward you as well. That first guard, Inchi, looks at you and says, Oi! Oi, little mate! What do you think you're doing over here? Hmm? That's a restricted hey. area. Uh, why, why is the bathroom door making that sound? And, uh, maybe Ain't make no a... bathroom door, goblin. Uh, sorry, sir. Uh, where, where's the bathroom? Roll, uh, deception check. DC 15. Ah, 13. Blinken, you want to try to do anything to help him out? I mean, let him, I... Let him, let him blow his own cover. I'm going to go up to um, Inchi, and I'm going to be like... Because I'm imagining Inchi is dressed like a trashy person yes. so like he's from the sewers and stuff right so i i I'm... Yeah. Oh, yeah he went to the sewers yesterday and has not taken a shower yeah exactly no. <laughs> so i would have go up to him and be like look i'm sorry he got loose uh he needs to uh you know know his place and i'm like looking at him like a child be like you know what you're doing, buddy. You know, you're, you're going to fucking get sent to the timeout or whatever the fuck it would be. And I'm, like, trying to drag him like a kid. But and I don't like, want to out. And I'm, like, hey. I'm, I'm talking to the guards. Here. Sorry, sorry. This kid, he's a nuisance. I'll, I'll take care of myself. All right. I hate you. I'll let you, Lincoln, roll a D6, and we'll add that to his deception check. Okay. Has to be to 15 still. 
Oh, that's good art. <laughs> well done. Good, but not impossible. They're good, but not great. Ooh, just barely. Yep, two. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So you get it, and the two guards uh, are now, like, both next to you. Both, and they say, Sir, we have no problem with goblins here, but you need to mind your place, or mind your manners. And they both sternly look at you, uh, and they let you know that they'll be watching you. And they say, any more disturbance from you, and we'll kick you out. No, we'll ban you for life. Oh, no. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. You listen I... to him. Listen to that guy. You better... I'm, like, talking to him as a fan. You listen to him. <laughs> yeah, I'm listening, man. <laughs> and then I start dragging him away. All right. As you're dragging them away, uh, you see one guard leans to another and says, Oi, mate, I'm going to take my break early today. And uh, he starts walking off towards that room that Inchi just tried to get into. Uh, Lincoln, roll a perception check. All right. Let's see. Perception. Where are you? There you are. Okay. Inchi, you roll a perception check, too. I okay. rolled, with real dice, a 16 total. There That's we go. Better. Real dice, much better. God damn, Inchi. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, it right, just Lincoln, you notice uh, that before the guard gets to the room, he reaches his hand inside uh, his chest cloak, uh, and he and the movement of the cloak implies that he like grabs something or rubs something. Then he pulls his hand out and he puts it on the locked door, and it just. He doesn't insert a key or anything like that. He just grabs the handle, twists it, and the door opens. And uh, you can see that there's about two other guards in that room, but you can't get a great look at the room because you were focused on his hands. Inchi, you were looking at the guards as uh, they uh, scolded you and told you to never do that again. Uh, and you were kind of jealous. They have decent armor. Better than you've ever had, at least. I, I, I see that. Dagger, I want that dagger. Mm. Oh, no, they don't have daggers. They have swords and spears. I want that big dagger. <laughs> All right. Uh, so that was Inchi's turn. Blinken, what do you want to do? Um, after dragging him out of there, um, I'm going to look at uh, Inchi's like, behave yourself, man. We need to, you know, be a little quiet. I'm, I'm, I'm trying. I was just trying to open the door, get a little peek, see. But whatever. What's your plan? Jesus, man. Uh, I don't know. I don't, we're going to have to keep scoping around and see what we got here. Um, so, um, yeah. I put an A by that door so y'all know that an alarm is there. Uh, okay. Does Rule 20 give y'all an option to, like, draw? Because y'all could draw on this hand map. That Dr. Uh, made. Let me see. Yep. Did that do anything? Yeah, yeah, it does. Yep. Yep. I had to erase that. Uh, click and drag and then this. hit delete. But don't get your token. So, like, me... do it from the right and get as much as you can, except for your token. Um... Okay, I'm also going to say for the people that were here during the playtest, uh, the guards are going to be a bit more aggressive than they were then, and a bit more aggressive than your typical D&D &D village guard. Yeah. Um, I think that's appropriate for a heist campaign. They're not going to be easily bribable because they're well paid. Uh, uh, they're better off just turning you into the city watch for trying to bribe them, and then continuing to do their job and get a paycheck, or get a pay pouch. That's what they get in Waterdeep, a pouch of coins. All right, Blinken, what did you want to do? Um, all right, so after that, I want to uh, look around um, and 
probably uh tell entry we should probably check uh the other um you know exhibits on the west there on the left side um like you know if we're able to pass through people and just kind of take a look around um and see if there's anything different over there and then we can go upstairs so if i were to go like this way yeah i'm sorry i think i was moving y'all and oh, that's all right uh, i fucked up <laughs> you got moved uh i'll so, be right back uh, i just gotta get her a uh, drink yep So up here you can see, uh, shit, I revealed too much, but you can see that there's a little vestibule area uh, here to your left immediately. You can see that there is a guard walking up and down uh, this little hallway here. Okay. Is this, area. this is the ancient plants exhibit. Artificial plants made of wood, silk, and other materials sprout from art artfully arranged planters. Tall ferns, bushes with strange berries, and slender trees are represented alongside placards about ancient plant life. One guard patrols this area. Okay. So I'll, I'll take note with the guard patrol there, and then I'm kind of, you know, bringing in tree along and be like, uh, going through, like, you know, this exhibit kind of scanning around, see if I could find anything useful while I look at look around, like maybe you know hidden paths or maybe like a a hatch or something, because um, I remember there was some entrance to the attic or something. Maybe there's like stairs or something somewhere around here. Uh, that's a good thing to look out for. Uh, Doctor Daniels mentioned that there is a small attic area. Uh, with a skylight on top, and then there is also a basement uh, that they load uh, exhibits, and uh, the basement is also used as a storage area. Okay. Um, over here on this west side, just a second. All right, you're looking around uh, in this area, this V3 area. Oh, y'all can't see the labels. Roll a perception check, Lincoln. All right. One sec. Perception. There it is. Okay. I rolled a 13. Nice. Okay, so if I shift thing, yeah, there we go. Right here and right here, these are secret doors. You notice that the the panels on these walls don't really match up right. It's not perfect. It's not flush. You notice that from your uh, work in the in the woodcutters or what's your guild? The guild of Fletchers and uh, yeah, Fletchers and archery, something like that. I forget now. Uh, Fletchers and archery. Boyers, yeah. Boyer, bo bo Boyers and Fletchers, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. Y'all do some woodworking there, so you notice that some of these areas aren't flush. You take a closer look at it, and you notice that, oh, this is a door that can slide into the wall next to it. Uh, when that guard's not around, maybe you could poke around at that, or just file it away that you know it's there. There are two secret doors that lead from this uh, small collection of square rooms uh, to this other collection of square rooms. Okay. Got it. Okay. Okay. Um, let us go back to uh, Huel real quick. Huel, you are walking up the stairs to the second floor. Let me show you that area.
So, Huel, as you walk up the stairs, one of the first things you notice is that there is a hallway to your left and to your right uh, that seem to lead to different parts of the museum. Uh, you can smell the scent of coffee and fresh pastries to your left. And to the right, you can hear the sound of a flushing toilet because Waterdeep has a functioning uh, plumbing system and they have a dung sweepers guild that empties out uh, buckets for buildings that don't have internal plumbing. So you see someone coming out of the bathroom over here on your right. Um, and you can also see a sign over here that says uh, roof or uh, attic access over here. But what really takes your attention is what is in front of you when you come up these stairs. You are in what uh, the El Torchal Museum of Natural History is most known for. It's Creatures of the Past exhibit, or nope, the Prehistoric Predators exhibit. The intact skeletons of several large prehistoric monsters are on display here, including the museum's most famous display. The beautifully preserved body of an allosaurus, its leathery skin appearing supple to the touch. An information placard next to the dinosaur explains it died in the Merkmire millennia ago and was naturally preserved. It was brought to the museum decades ago. Display cases of, along the room's walls hold fossils of other ancient local predators. Two guards patrol this area. And also by the staircase, there is another one of those really elegant, nice statues of a human woman. Hey, like I said, he's been looking at like exit bays, entrance ways. He he hears the bathroom and he's like, "Damn, someone's taking a shit." <laughs> he's not even paying attention to anything going on. And so then he sees the allosaurus and he like, that's like a like a scream as he sees it. I'm back, by the way. <laughs> Yo, yo, yo. Back. Yeah, I just feel like right, so looking around, have... like... Uh, in terms of exits, that uh, staircase to the attic uh, seemed pretty inviting. Uh, you can also tell uh, to the left where you smelled uh, coffee and pastries, there was some natural sunlight uh, coming into the hallway. So perhaps a window or something is over there. You know, I'll go towards the attic if I can. It's like up. All right. Thinking more of like exit ways and other options, right? Mm -hmm. So you notice that there are five uh, privies. That's what they're called, not bathrooms, privies. There are five stalls uh, with simple latches. And nothing here is locked. So yeah, you can go right on up these stairs. There you go, my man. Hey, so can you, you pull that you book up for a second? What? I was asking, can you put that book in front of your face for a second? Can't read the title. Oh, do you want to see it? Keys, oh, keys the golden from gold. the Golden Vault. Yeah. It looks cool. Yeah. Yeah, no, it had a very nice art cover. That's why. Sorry. Yeah. Oh. No, I got really intrigued by it when you like pulled it up and I'm like, ooh, shiny. Yeah, it's like shiny. Yeah, it's perfect. That's why I got, why I got it. Yeah. Because this book gold. is shiny, that's why we're playing this game. My inner goblin came out there for a second. <laughs> Perfect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you want to go up the stairs, right? Yeah, make it seem like he's he's holding his belly. The the bubble guts are kicking in, and he's gonna try to go up the stairs. Uh, go on my belly, and then when he gets there, he, he moves his hands off his belly and keeps going. There you go. All right, so you come into area seventeen, the attic. A winding staircase leads up to this cramped space filled with haphazardly stacked boxes. 
starlight pours into the space throughout a, through a large skylight that's right above you. So she, like, reflecting what's up here is mostly just... Sorry? What? Uh, so there's mostly just uh, boxes up here. Appears to be extra supplies and materials. And then the skylight. There's a few chairs up here. It's clear that a few employees probably take a break up here or hide uh, uh, here. He's been peeking around. Like, I look up and like the reflection will shine off of his glass monocle. The broken glass. He's just looking up at the light. Yeah, the sun's shining bright in through that skylight. Uh, you notice, uh, looking up at the skylight, that there's just a simple sliding uh, latch uh, that keeps it locked. Uh, other than if it wasn't locked, you could lift up one of those panes of glass uh, and probably get out through it or come in through it. You see, like, his eyes go big and, like, the one eye is bigger because the monocle. Yes, of course. Yeah, he's like, oh, this thinking to himself, this could be a way in or way out. Like, how, what's the distance between, like, the ground and the light up top? Like, this, like, sunlight. It's, like, above on the roof, right? Like, 30 feet high. Ooh, that's kind oh, of yeah. big for an attic. 15 feet high. No, no, it's... I gotta stick with the rules. I gotta stick with the rules. 30 feet high. Even still, yeah, he's it's like towering because he's a halfling, right? So he's looking up like, oh man, that that's a long drop. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's locked. That like shine in this monocle go away for a second. He's like, man, dang it. And like, he's not going to steal anything up here. He's just going to like look around for more like ins and outs and stuff, and then he's going to make his way back down. All right. Okay, so now we are going to go to Destry. Destry, you are walking up towards the Merkmeyer uh, exhibit with the curator, Alda Arkin. Uh, as she walks along, she says hey to various guests. Uh, you notice that the only ones she talks to are the noble ones, and she ignores the other ones. Uh, she passes the guards without mentioning anything to them. And as y'all are about to walk up the stairs uh, to this area, you see this little counter here. Um, there's one on the left side of the staircase and the right side of the staircase. Okay. There's an employee behind the counter that is selling different things. Uh, they are selling uh, little uh, uh, sewn patches that you can sew onto a shirt that says El Torchal uh, History of Natural Museum. There are little rocks that have El Torchal Museum carved into it. Uh, and there are various little tchotchkes uh, and things like that, that they would sell to children uh, and nobles, uh, reproductions of various paintings uh, and such. And you hear uh, all the say to one of the people working the, the counter say, make sure you get a proper inventory tonight. I want every gold piece accounted for. Uh, and she turns to you and says, oh, so hard to find good help amongst the common people. Yes, quite. <clears throat> they do uh, lack so a certain mm -hmm. use. Exactly. They're just not useful. I really hope that your family continues its hard work of building workhouses outside of the city for these people to go and find work that they are good for, you know? I don't like her. <laughs> she kind of likes you she says well i've been at this museum for quite a while i could show you around you know a private tour sometime mm. uh, y'all walk up the stairs and now you are in the prehistoric uh predators uh exhibit you see the same allosaurus and different skeletons as well as the two guards that uh, Huel saw. Uh, looking to your right, you can actually see Huel uh, walking uh, down the hallway, pretending to come out of the bathroom. You smell coffee and pastries coming to your left. 
and you see Alda say, Oh, yes, yes, it's just over here. Here, the Merc Mile Room. Do you want to do anything in this room that you're currently in, uh, Destry? Uh, yes, I would like to drop a fat pers uh, a perception check. Okay. Drop a fat perception check. It's a double di digit. It counts. What are you perceiving? Uh, okay. So downstairs, I know that these guys here are guards. Yes. Right. Yes. The what people? Who are these uh, guys again? Just nobles. No, uh, so any guests that are walking around, uh, the token says noble, but it's normal business hours, so it's a mix of uh, nobles, normal people, uh, peasants, you know, it's open to the public if you can pay for it. Okay. Uh, there seem to be any alarms that I can see? Um... You heard an alarm go off earlier. Alda probably should have said something about it. She talked to one of the guards about it, we'll say. Um, oh, okay. Uh, you can't see any of the alarms, uh, but she would talk to you. She says, ah, oh, yes, all of our alarms are magical, darling. The latest in magic tech, Elminster himself uh, uses this in one, of, in one of his towers here in Waterdeep. We are well safe and well secured, not to mention our heavy presence of guards here tonight. Uh, but with that fat perception check, you notice uh, right here, next to this door that y'all are standing to, there is a vent. A little, like, vent meant to let air circulate from the outside uh, in. Uh, right here. It is about uh, 10 feet up off the ground. Okay. Uh, but... Three foot high, three foot wide, five foot deep air vent. Uh, leading into the room next door, ten feet off the floor, there, uh, there is a metal uh, grate around it that looks like it could be pried off if you tried hard enough. Okay. Uh, Al Alda is uh, messing around uh, with that bag that she ran back into her office uh, to get, and she says, so normally you have to put a little bit of magic dust on your hands and then touch the thing that has the alarm spell on it, uh, the door. But, oh, oh. fancy old me, and she says, like, giving you, like, some sweet eyes, she says, I have the master key. And she pulls out this elegant silver key uh, from her uh, bag. She says, I just didn't want to get any of that magical powder on my fingers. Who knows what repeated exposure to that would do? And she fiddles with this key uh, in a lock to the door, and she opens up this room, this room that has a stands outside of it saying, Merk Meyerstone, unveiling tonight. Okay. Um, right. And so she walks you in, and I'll describe it real quick, but the first thing you notice is that there is already two guards in this room. They're standing just on the other side of the door as y'all walk in. Um, and all this says, hello, Miriam. Hello, Tyrus. Uh, anything to report? And they go, no, Miss, Miss Arkin. Uh, the exhibit is as safe as ever. So you walk in here and you see uh, empty chairs uh, sat around uh, many tables that have tablecloths over them and dishes set on them, but no food yet. Uh, there are various uh, staff members uh, attending to these tables, putting cups and uh, 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 silverware down in just the right position. Um, against the east wall, uh, you can see that there are several stones on display uh, on these fancy tables. And then there is one exhibit uh, in the middle that looks like a very big stone that has a piece of cloth draped over it. And you can see signs all around the room uh, giving out details of the Merkmeyer uh, dig and the Merkmeyer exhibit. Uh, and there are various drawings and paintings of the exhibit. And you can see in one of these paintings is clearly uh, Dr. Cassie Daniel Daniels uh, brushing dirt off a giant green stone. Okay. 
And she says, this is the gemstone wing. I'm hoping it will be the jewel of the El Torcho of La Mystica. Oh, guys, uh, there's also this blank sheet of paper uh, between the two maps that's there for you all to write your own notes on if you want. Okay. Okay. Um, so I know where the stone is. I know everything I need to about what's going on here. You still haven't seen the stone. It's covered by cloth. Yes. Okay. I have my familiar with me, obviously. Yes, your raven. He, yeah, he's in the shape of a raven. Uh, I'm going to walk towards the stone that has the cloth over it and be like, may I? And she says, use your hands gently with everything in this room. My dear, it'll be like the cloth never knew I was here. And I'm going to lift off the cloth. Gently. Do you want to roll a smooth check? See how smooth no, you are? I don't want to riz. <laughs> I don't want to riz. I've made this mistake yeah, yeah, enough me, times. <laughs> give me that riz check, dog. No. Nah. Okay, so you take it off, <laughs> and you see a very big stone. I'm going to put a picture of it in chat. I've, st I've oh, seen shit. bigger. I have, a, okay. I have a picture of the Allosaurus, too. God damn it. Where's the picture? Don't make me hit on your NPCs, Mike. You won't like it when I hit on your, uh, uh, my, your NPCs. My NPCs I won't like are it. inviting you to hit on them. I'm surprised you haven't already. I was told to stop. <laughs> and I'm... <laughs> I don't uh, feel like doing it. Alright, so I'll put it in the chat, and it's going to be up here on roll 20 in just a second. There we go. Oh, yeah, it's a big stone. Big stone, and you unearth it, and it looks glorious. It's big, it's green. They have it on this little marble column stand just for itself. The stone. Where's the description of the stone? Oh, it just calls it a peculiar light green stone. Okay. Just a second, guys. I need to see how much the stone weighs before I describe it to you. I wrote it here somewhere. You said she was an elf, right? Yes. Okay. So the stone looks very heavy. It looks like it could weigh anywhere from like 80 to 120 pounds. It is this light pale green. Uh, on the edges of it, it kind of looks like it could be a murky emerald. But it you swear to God, it gets this lighter, paler shade of green in the center, which is very odd. You haven't seen that in a stone before. Okay. Um, I have a DM ruling question. Yes. Uh, I'm not going to cast it just yet, but I have a spell that I want to cast at some point. And I, it does not specify that the creature is aware of the spell being casted on it. Just that if anyone related to the person uh like party member wise uh, hurts the person it was cast on the spell ends um i'm assuming it doesn't like they don't remember it's kind of just like that happened for that s specific instance so 
uh, long story short, if I were to get her away from all the guards, be like, hey, you should give me the master key. Come back in like six hours. And uh, I steal the gem with the master key and then give her back the key. That way it can't be tracked back to me. Uh, get far enough away to drop the spell because there is no distance limit on it. Yeah. Could I theoretically get the key off her, come here, steal the item, go back to her, give her the key, and call it a day? So, uh, the way suggestion works is, let's say you got it off, and you convinced her to give you the key, and you, mm -hmm. uh, and you held concentration on it. Uh, you can hold it for up to eight hours, so you can get Correct. her to maintain the suggestion for up to eight hours. Uh, once it's over, she will know that something was done to her. She's not just going to go, oh, why did I give that over? Uh, characters in Waterdeep are smart. They are aware of magic and how it works, especially ones that work uh, in security or around magic a lot. Um, so it's not like she would forget that this happened. Okay. I have an idea then. Okay. Um, and that's up to you. And she says, uh, you can examine the stone all you want, but don't touch it. It has a special security mechanism in the pedestal. Can you tell me more about the uh, security system? Um, uh, she says, yes, of course, it is uh, some kind of magical uh, pressure plate. Uh, whenever the stone is removed, when it's not supposed to be, uh, it will trigger an alarm spell. All the doors in the areas will lock, and the doors to the outside uh, on the first floor will lock as well, as well as uh, alarms uh, will raise, bringing the city watch here, post haste, and all guards in the museum to this room. I assure you, sir, your family, their reputation, and their financials have nothing to worry about. Okay. So, what security systems are in place to say if this rumor is true, though? How would you stop something from, say, breaking out of it? Yes, I'm aware of your opinion on it, that it is all hearsay and bollocks. But, you have to be uh, sure. She says, well, sir, we cannot plan for every contingency. What if one of our uh, 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 prehistoric animals were to come to life and roam around the museum eating people? We can't plan for everything. We have reasonable security and reasonable expectations. The person who raised these concerns is disgraced and crazy. She was having problems long before this. Do not worry. There is nothing wrong with the Merkmeyer Stone. Dozens of hands, dozens of magical scholars have been over it in its normal process of study and coming to us. Again, I know... <laughs> um... What was I going to say? Uh, what exactly did this, this... What what did you call her? A, um, the employee. What exactly did she do to be disgraced? Just raise a few concerns? Oh, Dr. Dennis has been a thorn in my side ever since I came to this museum. She always thinks... That uh, she knows better because she is an academic. Well, I am a curator. I curate her research for the public, and sometimes that involves changing a few things or simplifying a few things. And she always raises a bugbear about it. Uh, she uh, is always trying to take exhibits out of the museum so they can be studied further, withholding uh, uh, artifacts before they could be put into the museum so they could be studied further. What she doesn't realize is the great thing about a museum is that you can come here 
and study it and look at it. And it can also turn a profit. Oh, so she was bad for business. You say that out loud? Yes. But she I'm gonna was, I'm gonna I'm was, gonna say it in a way that like I'm agreeing with her. Like, yes, she's bad for business. Makes sense. Yes, yes. And what people like her don't understand is she would not have the position, her food, her research materials, her expeditions, if it weren't for the business. Waterdeep is changing, and El Torchal Villa is trying to change with the times. Dr. Danos, I believe, is stuck in the past. I see. Well, I am glad that you're doing what is best for the museum. I, I thank you on behalf of all the Castellanters. She goes, your thanks is particularly appreciated. Uh, are y'all done in here? Um, if she wants to be excused, I will excuse her. But I personally am not done in here, no. Oh, well, she won't leave until you leave. But we're going to go back to everybody else, okay? Perfect. Um, Inchi and Blinken, y'all are over here uh, in the prehistoric plants exhibit. You notice that there are some secret doors on the left over here. I'm going to say that you notice that the secret doors lead to the area V4. V4 is the ancient cultures exhibit. Uh, glass displays uh, boast of objects related to the ancient uh, uh, El Torchal family. Clay pots, uh, stone tools, and scraps of leather are interspersed with informational placards about their historical significance. Uh, question, are we uh, using components for spells? Uh, I would say that you have a component pouch, which has all of your components uh, in it. Uh, after this first mission, I'll start making you keep track of it so that you can buy components when you run out. I see. I'll, just, I'll probably add it to your weekly expenses rather than make you track it. Okay, well, because the guards are specifically on to NC, I'm going to hold my turn and, uh, again, trail behind Blinken. Okay. All right, Lincoln. Um, so I kind of, uh, you know, once the guard is out of uh, earshot, I whisper to um, Inchi and be like, mentioning that there's these secret doors here, um, and then like, uh, basically, oh, secret doors here. But yeah, I want to know why. Um, uh, you know, so like, uh, you know, uh, I'll, I'll be like. Well, what do you do? You want to try to sneak through, or should I? I don't know if you want to, you know, either distract the guard, or maybe I'll distract the guard. It's up to you. What these doors? Oh, yeah, no, no. I'm curious. Uh, I'll check it out if you don't want to. All right. I mean, I, I'll, I'll strike up a. If the guard comes by, I'll strike up conversation. See uh, if I could distract them while you're, you know, doing your thing. Okay. Uh, when the guard comes over to you, Blinken, you notice that he's wearing really nice armor and has got like a really nice sword uh, on him. Uh, better than the typical uh, guard old leather armor. This appears to be new studded leather armor. Uh, and the sword hilt uh, is fresh and clean and doesn't have many scratches on it. Okay. Um, so, yeah, as the guard comes closer, I'm just kind of like looking at him and kind of smiling and be like, oh, hello, good sir. Um, man, that's some good armor. If it, was it made here in the city? I'm, I'm just curious. Was, oh, yeah, made by the armor's good. We apparently got ourselves a fresh batch of that inventory. Real nice, really good. Aldo really showed up for us, said that we're going to be doing bigger exhibits, so we need bigger and better security. Yeah, I hear that there's a gala coming up, so that's good. That's good news. Oh, gala's gonna be great. Gonna try to land myself a noble lass, if you know what I'm saying, eh? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Inchi, while this, 
while this conversation is going on, how do you want to check out this secret door? Yeah, and she's going to, like, peek behind this plant right here, check to make sure Blinken's got this covered. Then he's going to go back to this uh, outline of the door, and he's going to see if he can open it. Is there anything I need to roll to do that? Stealth check with advantage because Blinken is distracting the guard. Ooh, that's pretty good. <laughs> Your first roll so low. <laughs> so, Blink, uh, Inchi just silently, like, you slide, like, your little, like, claw into the tiny gap, and you pull gently and very silently uh, and uh, smoothly, the door just slides into the wall, and you can step into this little 5x5 five five area right here and slide the door back. And then there's another sliding door like that on the other side. There's nothing really in this five by five area. Uh, it looks like it isn't swept as regularly as everywhere else. And then you slide the door open on this side and you can just see into this uh, ancient cultures exhibit. Uh, roll a uh, insight check to see if you can determine the purpose of this room. Oops. Uh. God damn it, it's seven. It's like you need to uh, uh, acquire some new dice. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah, Maybe buy those real dice, man. <laughs> I uh, miss Foundry. Uh, you uh, kind of struggle to think about it in your head for a bit, but you think maybe it's like a shortcut between areas. I guess they're just too lazy to walk around, huh? All right. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, pop back out over here. All right. And you shut the door, and it's like you were never even there. And I just kind of walk up behind Blinken and uh, give him a little tap on the shoulder. And uh, here you go. Uh, and, the, and the guard is saying to Blinken, and then my dad shouts at me, Hey, that's not no noble's daughter. That's a donkey. Ah, ha, 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 ha. What an ass. Ha, ha, ha. And I felt the tap. And I'm like, all right. Uh, well, appreciate that. That's pretty good. I hope you do get a noble ass. And then, uh, you know, maybe uh, we'll, we'll talk about it at the at a tavern nearby. Yeah, mate. Sounds great. Um we're going to go to Huel up on the uh, <laughs> second floor. Huel, uh, you just saw uh, your friend Destry uh, go off into the gemstone wing uh, with the elven woman. You are standing at the staircase. To your right is the privies and attic entrance. To the left is that smell of pastries and coffees. And to your south is the Allosaurus exhibit. You notice that there are hallways uh, leading off uh, to various other places. We'll say, like, in that instance of time and, like, like he was, uh, there was a long conversation there. He was in the privy. He was, you know, took a big shit. Yeah, He's yeah. walking out. He's, like, doing yeah, up his belt. Go. He's walking out. He'll All see right. that. He'll hear that the conversation going on to the self with, um, Death Street. He's going to go towards, like, the, the uh, eastern or not. Uh, what's the part where he's the smelling, eastern. like, the, the sweets and the coffee and stuff like that. All right. Before he heads on out. He's going to leave when he catches that whiff. He's like, oh. Ooh. I just shat. Yeah, time to shit again. From the coffee. Yeah. All right. This is the unearthed cafe. This space holds a mixture of cafeteria-style tables and lounge furniture. A counter in the northeast corner sits underneath a sign that reads, Unearthed Cafe. There is one guard in this area sitting in one of the chairs. And there is also a member of the, or an employee of the museum, uh, standing behind a counter giving out uh, little cookies and little cups of coffee uh, to people that pay her in uh, gold and silver pieces. And then she deposits those gold and silver pieces into a little box that's on the counter. And she says, welcome to the Unearthed Cafe. How may I help you today, Sam? 
Oh, you know, I was just walking around and I caught a whiff of aroma of something, something splendid. And he, he's going to pull out his pipe. He's like, am I allowed to smoke in here? She says, sir, this is water deep. You could smoke any way you want. Like She pulls out a, a giant vape and starts hitting it. <laughs> pulls out his pipe, he like has it in his mouth and he's like puffing it, you know what I mean, to get the flame going. Like, like all right. Fantastic. So you notice that the daylight you saw coming in is through some very small round windows. Uh, they'd be a tight fit even for you. Oh shit, the game just closed. Uh, Said you left too for the DM. <laughs> yeah. On the bottom. Fuck this That's game. Funny. I'm, I'm bored with this shit. Damn right. Oh yeah, hold on. All right. Is everybody else still in the game though? I yeah, it didn't close so. the the game. Like it just said you left. Okay. Back. Yeah, we're we okay. still be good. All yeah. Right. All right. Yeah. So that's where that sunlight was coming from. Guard in here. There appear to be more exhibits uh, to the south. He's like squinting his eye. That's not in the monocle. And he's like looking through the monocle, like to get a better view. He looks at the windows and he's like, "Oh, I'll take a coffee to go." She says, one coffee for you, Seth. Uh, and it is just like straight black coffee. They don't have creamer and stuff yet. She says, that'll be one silver piece, sir. The toss are two silver and then bows his head and he starts drinking the black coffee as he's leaving. She goes, oh, thank you. All right. Take, take and, a note yeah, of the they... windows and stuff like that. And you're heading out of the museum? Yeah, I'd like trying to find Inchi and Blinken and wait for Destry to finish up his his uh yeah. his excursion. I'll, in there. The, I'll, I'll see I see him go in there, right? Like Yeah. I heard yeah, him. yeah, you saw him you saw him pass by you earlier. I'll say all of you meet down in the lobby area next to one of those stalls that are selling little chotskis. Uh, there's a, a little girl uh, there, like, saying, please, please, mommy, I want the doll, I want the little doll. And there's, like, little dolls that are dressed up in prehistoric outfits, like little tiny wooden dolls that are pretty cheap, a common person could buy them. Um, going up to Destry and Alda Arkin uh, in the gemstone wing, uh, Alda is tapping her long fingernails against her clipboard, uh, very politely but impatiently uh, waiting for you to finish your examination. I was muted. I'm going to walk up to one of the guards, stick my hand out, and ever so politely but firmly, show me the dust. He goes, Oi, what's that? Gonna look stunned. Look around a bit and be like, Is someone else asking questions? I believe I asked to be shown the dust. He says, oh yeah, I got some dust on the bottom of the boot. And then Alda says, Mr. Castellanta here would love to see the alarm dust that we use. And he goes, oh, oh, right, sir. And he uh, pulls a small pouch uh, out of his pocket. Uh, and you can see inside there's like this stone, and when you rub it, like bits of it come off uh, and would coat your hand in this fine purple dust. Uh, what kind of check would I need to do to figure out what kind of stone it is? Um, probably some kind of arcana check. Okay. Uh, also, would. Because I have my crow with me, who's technically an imp. Right? Mm -hmm. Would he also be able to maybe figure it out? I'm trying to see if I can find uh, the imp stat block again. Mm. Uh, there we go, I found it. Yeah, um, uh, your imp. It has good uh, intelligence. It can make a history check. I have better intelligence than my imp. 
Yeah, <laughs> I, I figured that. So you should probably do it. Yeah, I'm going to get him to assist me. You said uh, Arcana check? Yeah. All right, with advantage, because I'm getting assisted by the imp. And the imp, the imp comes from your patron, right? Correct. Okay. Is that a problem? No. Okay. <clears throat> Would be a 19. Oh, very nice. Uh, so your imp wasn't very helpful. It's uh, It was saying stone, stone, smash stone into smaller stones, then sell small stones for mini gold coins. Uh, you With your 19, uh, you can tell that this is a rare material, uh, very rarely used because it is a bit fragile. You have to do a lot of processing uh, to make it usable in building materials. It is pure silica that appears to have some kind of magical crystals uh, mixed into it. I see. I'm going to reach for the bag. Um, all this says, Sir Castellanza, uh, my god, said, that are things to do. Surely, uh, you've seen enough at this point. I was, I, I, uh, <clears throat> I told my aunt that I would be inspecting the security of the exhibit and the stone. I believe I have all day until the exhibit opens to do my inspection. By no means are you and your guards forced to stay. I have no desire to cause any trouble. And, you know, as the curator, I must assume that you have better duties than to babysit one of your patrons' uh, relatives in a basic security search. She says, well, sir, with you here, you are the most important thing in the museum, so I'll be right by your side. Go ahead, uh, Francis, show him the stone. And if anything were to happen, I have all of the guards in this lovely museum. I feel no threat. In fact, I must insist for you to go and check on your other duties, as well as your guards. Is this a... Is this a persuasion or intimidation? Um, let's lean this more to uh, persuasion at the moment. Roll me a persuasion check. Difficulty 18. I got the 8. Hey, there you go, bud. That's almost there. Uh, she says... Unfortunately, sir, your aunt also did ask me to keep an eye on you. Alright, now we're moving to the intimidation portion of this. Um, so you'll deny uh, a Castle Lantern's request who is here and witnessing what is happening compared to one who is not and unaware of what is occurring at this very moment would be a shame if I had to tell her you wouldn't listen to basic instructions it would also be a shame if I had to find someone to replace you and become the new curator maybe someone who actually values the history of what enters their museum I wonder what that ex-employee is currently doing. <laughs> Go ahead and roll your intimidation. Motherfucker! Oh, shit! Oh! <laughs> she looks taken aback uh, by the direct threat to her career. Um, and she kind of takes a step back uh, and says... Sir Castellanza, I do not know what you mean to imply, but if the stakes are so high as that, we could go straight to Victoro and Amalia Castellanza themselves. They are the ones that fund this museum. Your aunt is merely a friend, and you 
have never stepped foot in here before. I will do what you ask. I will stay with you all day until the gala. But do not threaten me again. Praxis, show him the stone that he wanted to see, and she mentions that to the guard. And when he hands you over the bag, uh, Aldous says, If you wish to look at the room without me here, fine. I will be over in the Allosaurus exhibit. The gods will leave under no circumstances. And she walks out, and she's no longer flirting with you. Her high heels clip on the marble <laughs> floor as she walks out. And you can hear her, as soon as she gets out of the room, go, The nerve. I'm going to look at the guard. And l loudly enough to where, as she's on the other side of the door, I'm going to say, So hard to find good help these days, don't you think? Oh, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And to You're think I was by... trying to be polite. You're in here by yourself. What do you want to do? All right. So I have the uh, silica magic dust stone. Hmm. And I'm going to walk up to the next door. Obviously, the guard's watching me. And I'm going to hmm. ask him in a very polite tone. <clears throat> Is this door set with an alarm? I just wish Which... to firsthand experience the uh security system uh which door south door south door uh he says uh no sir that one don't have no alarm on it uh the uh, the room uh the area that you entered the door that you entered this room through that has an alarm on it and he means this one right here that you saw the curator unlock with her key Okay, so it stands to reason that if I relock it, it would require the dust. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Okay, uh, you step outside, Alda relocks the door. Uh, you try to turn it uh, without the dust on your hands, and you hear that soft doo. Perfect. Doo. And then I'm going to take a little bit of the dust... Snap it off and mm -hmm. go to unlock the door. Uh, you just you don't even have to unlock it uh, with that dust on your hand. You just turn the knob and it unlocks smoothly by itself, and you can open it, and that alarm does not go off. All right. Now, what happens to the dust on my hand? Is it still there? It's still there, but it's lost that purple glowy sheen, and now it's just gray silica dust. So it's single use. Okay. I'm going to kneel down in front of the uh, statue. And she said that it was arcane lock. In front of the statue? Yep. You said that what the statue, statue had a magic... The exhibit, the, the rock. Oh, the pedestal, yeah. Pedestal, thank you. Uh... uh uh, pedestal is rigged with a uh there's some uh she said transputation magic. Okay. You and can roll an arcana check, you can do a detect magic spell. I would detect magic, but I don't have it. So mm -hmm. what I'm gonna do is I'm going to Arcana. Oh that's athletic. Mm -hmm. Going to Arcana and not no shit. So I'm going to break off a bit of the uh, silica again. Mm -hmm. And the guards are watching you, by the way. That is fine. I'm I'm conducting a security check. I have to check the yeah. security no, on. I, the I'm just pedestal. letting you know. I know. I'm letting you know. And I'm going to open the pedestal up. Is it or does it open? If I like, is there any like hatches or anything, or is it just the rock on the pedestal? Uh, yeah, it's not behind any glass or anything. It's just the exposed rock okay. on a pedestal. So I'm gonna look at the guard before I do this and be like, 
How do you bring? How do you uh, take off the stone in order to bring it to cleaning? Because obviously it's covered in dust currently. During the gala, you want it to be nice and clean. How would they take it off? Well, the uh, cleaning staff that comes in after the museum closes up every night as a sorcerer on hand dispels the magic and reinstates it once all the cleaning processes have been done. Then they add a security when they're all done. Locks up and activates all the alarms after that. Makes sure that the arcane lock crystals are ready to go. And then leads us to our nightly guard duties. So Okay, so there's a sorcerer who comes in. Okay. Um... Gonna like pass the silica between my hands, look at it some more, and hand it back to him. Okay. Uh, you notice that your hands are just covered in that dust, and like it got all over your clothes and everything too. Yep. Yep. Okay. I'm gonna look at him uh, and be like, to think. Our lovely security system is guarded by a rock. <laughs> Let out, like, one of those, like, you know, noble la like chuckles where it's just like, I can't believe how silly that is. They make new things every day, sir. Intriguing, isn't it, as I'm going to step out? I'm not going to touch anything. Uh, as you step out, uh, Alda Arkin is writing on her little flipboard uh, while watching you. She can write without looking. Did I not dismiss you, ma'am? She said, oh, I'm doing my daily inspections. The Allosaurus exhibit examined. Hmm. Well, I'll put in a good word to my aunt for you. I appreciate all of your hospitality. It was yes, very she, nice. And she says, yes, and in this report that I'm writing of your visit, did you notice anything that we could improve? Well, for starters... When you let the average riffraff in, I see that you don't have someone checking to make sure that they aren't armed. For example, I saw three vagrants walk in earlier, brandishing weapons. You know the kind of damage they could cause to this kind of uh, establishment. No, 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 I feel like that is a security risk to not only the staff, but the merchandise. We will check all riffraff for weapons at the gala tonight. But what's to stop them from damaging something now? The guards. The many guards that we employ. How close is one of the guards to me? There are two in this room right now. Okay, I mean, like, okay, so that's as close as they are right now? Yeah, 10 feet is okay. the closest one. So I'm going to step in front of the, uh, whatever, Asaurus. Allosaurus. Yeah. Draw my dagger, and I'm going to fake... Uh, going to slash at it. Uh, when you put your hand on the hilt of your sword, uh, the guards, uh, like, put the hands on theirs hilts and step towards you uh and you draw your sword and you fake poke it i'm going to like a like uh you know how the dinosaur has a fat head yeah 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 i'm going to fake like just very quickly up like draw and slash at once just to like make it look like i'm going to you know damage the goods okay as I your sword gets i gets yeah i was gonna close to this thing's face, you appear to activate something, and the t entire giant uh, figurine of the Allosaurus begins to move. Its head 
rotates to the side and its arms go up and down and it shifts its weight from one leg to the other. And uh, you hear a... <laughs> and it moves very animatronically and robotically. It's a neat parlor trick, and I'm going to put my dagger away. But what's to stop one of the paintings in one of the other rooms from being damaged? So we have mending spells and restoration authors. This villa has been open in Waterdeep for ages. Most Waterdarians go around completely unarmed. Your concerns are noted in this report. And if you wish for us to examine all riffraff today, we will do so. Fine, if you believe that your security is up to snuff, then I currently have no concerns. Great. Well, it was a pleasure to have you come by the museum. Oh, I'm not done. Motherfucker. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> exactly? What? Hmm? I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. What else I'm do you want to do at the museum? I'm going to, uh, walk this way. <laughs> okay. Uh, you walk into the unearthed cafe. Uh, there's a woman behind the counter selling uh, little pastries and uh, bits of black coffee. Uh, there's a guard there that she is talking to, and they're both uh, excited for the gala tonight. I'm just going to walk right past them. Excellent. And I'm going to start heading down this way. Okay, so, great, I was hoping someone would come here. Alright, so there is a guard uh, walking along this hallway from left to right. There's actually two of them. Oh wait, there's actually three of them. And this is area V8, V9, and V10, respectively, the Underground Wonders exhibit. Glittering ore and gemstones are arranged in uh, velvet-backed display cases. Uh, these ores and stones look like they would be worth some money each. Uh, you also notice that in this room, uh, V8 right here, that there is a fake Merkmeyer stone, a replication of the Merkmeyer stone, uh, set to look just like it. It's just a normal stone that's been painted green. There's also the archaeological display. Picks, trowels, brushes, and other archaeological tools are on display here uh, from famous local digs. Uh, you notice that the hand axes and the pickaxe here are incredibly well made because they're designed to just pick at the rock all day. They make oh. really good weapons. So, here's my question. Would mm -hmm. the untrained eye be able to discern that stone from the normal stone? Uh, yeah, the moment that you looked at it closely, you'd realize it was painted and not like semi-transparent like the actual Merkmire stone is. Mm. But it is the it looks the same, like it's been carved to look the same and is presumably the same weight. Okay. Going to uh wave the guard over. Oi, sir, how may I assist you? What can you tell me of this uh stone? Uh, well, sir, we got different stones here. We got a sapphire ore, we got an emerald ore. Not we got a... all the stones, this one in particular. Oh, uh, this is a replication of the Merkmar stone, sir. Uh, it's what we've been uh, allowing the press to come in and take looks at. Uh, we also used it to, uh, the decorators used it when they were arranging the gemstone museum. See, it's too valuable to have the real stone out there at all times, so we have this little fake one. Uh, that we used for staging purposes. I see. And is this one got security on it as well? Uh, 
just the normal amount of security, sir. The same as any other uh, exhibit. Good to know. And I'm gonna step off down the hallway. I'm still not touching anything, by the way. Oh, okay. I'm just walking roll past a, all of them. Roll a perception check. Was that perception I rolled? Yes, it is. 19. 19. As you walk along, you notice that there are secret doors in this hallway, uh, similar to the ones that they found downstairs. Uh, I'm letting you, the player, know that. You, the character, doesn't know that they found them downstairs. But they're right here and right here, respectively. There is also just a normal door leading from the area with the archaeological dig tools that would make good weapons. Uh, there's a door right here that is uh, locked, uh, but if you go up, it would take you back into the gemstone wing. Hmm. Good to know. Uh, I'm going to wait for that guard closest to me. Oh, I'm sorry. I fucked up. There's two rooms with nice things in here. There's the rooms with the small stone ores, the ones with the archaeological tools, and then the underground wonders exhibit. There's also a dagger and a hand axe there from primitive societies. So there's a secret door right here. Am I to assume yep. it leads into here, or is it a staircase? Yes. No, it's not a staircase. It's like a shortcut. Okay. going to walk up to it. When the guard's not looking, I'm going to quietly use my leg to push on the, uh, the wall. Mm -hmm. To see if uh, it opens. Um, when you put a little bit of pressure on it, it slides to the side smoothly and quietly. And my, my, my foot had no dust on it. Yeah. Perfect. I'm going to close it. Okay. All right. And I'm going to make my way back down the stairs to, uh, the rest of the, uh, and find the rest of the guys. All right. You see everybody hanging out, uh, around that tchotchke table uh somebody else comes up and buys a lot it's a noble family so they end up giving five gold pieces to the person behind the counter is there anything else y'all wanted to do in the museum <coughs> um I, I, was... I would say no for me i don't know about anybody else I was going to try to sneak into that middle office, but my computer fucking crashed on me, so Inchi is good. Okay. You all exit the museum, and you are now on the stairs outside. Um, I'll say it's around noon. Uh, the gala that you have four tickets for is happening tonight at 7. Uh, what would y'all like to do uh, in Waterdeep? Um, once we're away from the museum and the guards, I'm going to relay everything to the party. Uh, I'm going to show them my hands and clothes that are covered in the dust. So this is what we're going to need to, to get through all the locked doors, but there are secret doors on the second floor that can get us into the room without it. And I'll uh, I'll relay that there there's secret doors in the first floor as well, but obviously I don't think it'll be leading upstairs. Um, so that's interesting. Uh, there's also a sorcerer. I didn't ask for any information regarding him because it would be too blatant. But he comes in and dispels the uh, the magic guarding the pedestal. 
and if we can get him to keep it dispelled till after, then we should be should be able to uh, acquire the gem without causing a ruckus. Hmm. So how, how should we do that? Because that would probably be the best route, unless anybody else have any other ideas. Because, like, for, for the first floor, like I said, all I saw was, that I've noticed, was, like, a few um, alarm tricks on doors and then, you know, the secret doors. Well, this dust will get us through most of the alarms. It, however, will not get us past the transmutation magic guarding the gem. Hey, Destry. Mm hmm. As you're holding up your hands explaining that, you notice that the purple crystals are kind of fading and becoming gray on your hands. They also seem to be time sensitive. Mm. It's a good thing we found the, uh,. Secret doors, we might not be able to use the dust. Well, if we were to do this, when what would be the approach? Would we do it during the gala, or should we do it? Well, go into the bathroom, I'll be right back. Yep. Yep. I feel like the best bet would be to acquire information regarding the sorcerer. Find out who he is, where we can locate him. Convince him to either go in and leave it unlocked. Or find something to leverage him and force him to keep it unlocked. we have any information besides a sorcerer? No, I would have inquired more about it, however, the curator and I got into a bit of a... dick measuring contest, let's say. Okay. So, how would we find this sorcerer? Think anybody at the Yawning Portal would know about this sorcerer? Oh, well, let's ask our, uh... employer. What's his face? Oh, Gladys. Or what's her face? What's her face? Oh, uh, that's right. I forgot. Uh, Daniel. Daniel? Yeah. Dr. Daniel. Well, we yeah. could go over there. Daniel. We could go over there and see uh, if, uh, you know, if he'll give us some information about the sorcerer. All right. Y'all remember that Dr. Daniel's office is over in the academy uh, area of the villa? Uh, last time you saw her, she was packing up her office and being fired. You don't know if she is there right now or not. I mean, we're still at the university. We could just walk to her office now. True. Go we could go that check. Out and then make our way there. Yeah, we could check and see if she's around there. All right, so y'all go uh, by her office, uh, and you see that she is, in fact, there. She's packing up the very last of her books. She's down to just two or three boxes that she's going to pick up and take out. But you all also notice that sitting at her desk with his feet up on the desk and a big old stack of books is Galanis, and he's flipping through these books, and he's asking questions of Dr. Daniels. And he says, Now, when Daggolt never ended fled, did anybody get a chance to interrogate him or debrief him before he left the city limits? And Dr. Daniels looks scatterbrained and says, No, no, I don't believe anybody did. He fled it in the middle of the night. Uh, he got away and ran straight to Neverwinter. And uh, Galanis says, uh, God, God's been damned. Everywhere I look for this thing, it's another dead end after another. He throws the book on the table and he picks up another one and he starts flipping through it. <clears throat> oh, there's the crew. How did your scouting mission go? 
Well, we have an idea. We're forming a plan. But we need some information. Uh, and Dr. Gamels goes, how can I help? The sorcerer. Who is he? Or she? It, they, the them. Sorcerer, sir? The cleaning the, crew. Uh, the, the one who goes crew. in to disenchant the magic? <clears throat> oh, yes. He'd be um, uh, from the uh, Sweepers Guild. Uh, they have many people that specialize in uh, uh, disabling magic alarms for uh, cleaning purposes. Uh, he would come in with the cleaning crew after uh, everyone leaves the museum at night. Um, I think they, the guild usually rolls around this area at about uh, 1 p.m. or 1 a.m., I believe. And that's when they would start their cleaning. It usually takes them two hours, and then they leave. And you said the Sweepers Guild? Yes. Do you have a name for him? Or does he have a name? It might not even be the same person every night. Intriguing. We would have to well, go to the Sweepers Guild to figure that out. Yep. I was about to say we're going to the Sweepers Guild. All right. Um, so y'all are done here. Uh, as y'all leave her office, uh, you can hear Galanis's voice. Now, last time I was in Waterdeep, there was this band. A group of bards called themselves the Doom Raiders. What have they been up to recently? Um, and that's the last thing you hear from him. So the Sweepers Guild. Sweepers Guild. Where's my guild book? I don't know where the Sweepers Guild is, but we're going to say that you guys find your way there after some walking through uh, the area. Blinken, you are in a guild yourself, so you kind of know how it works, but every guild has their own uh, practices and rules. Uh, you know that the best course of action would be to walk into their main guild hall or their ward, uh, local guild hall, and just ask uh, the secretary uh whatever questions y'all plan to ask. Yep. I'll, uh, you know, relay the information, making sure that if, if you don't know how a guild works, you need to talk to somebody, uh, a secretary of sorts, to see if we could get some information. So, so you find the, the Sweepers Guild. Uh, it's about noon now, we'll say. Or, no, I think I said it was later. Oh, yeah, it's about noon, so the sun's high in the sky. Uh, people are uh, gathering in the main hall of the Sweepers Guild. They're here for their break. Uh, there's a giant pot of stew going. There's fresh fruit being handed out, uh, coffee, water, uh, various kinds of juices and things like that. Uh, seems to be a pretty decent guild to be a part of. People with dirty, dusty clothes are sitting down talking and laughing, people with grease and such on their hands uh, are eating with uh, utensils and uh, napkins. Uh, and there is one woman at an information desk uh, who is writing on a piece of parchment. All right, so I'm going to walk up. And uh, who is in charge of uh, scheduling for all of today and tonight? activities um, let me say that right here is where this uh, guild hall is um, and the woman behind the desk goes uh, sir are you a member of the guild can you present your ID card oh no 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 I wish to hire someone for a cleaning service uh, she says, oh, yes, of course. Uh, which ward do you live in, sir? Funny enough, I live in the sea ward. She goes, well, that's perfect. You came to the right place. So uh, she looks at your uh, clothes. She says, uh, is this a house or a manor? Actually, uh, it's for a museum. 
She and goes, I believe oh. there's Yes. I believe that there should be an outstanding agreement for nightly cleanings of the museum. However, I have a personal request of the guild. And I would like mm -hmm. to speak with whom is in charge regarding the scheduling uh, about a thorough cleaning of a specific location in the museum. Okay, uh, just before we go on here, uh, it sounds like you're getting very close to committing the type of fraud, which <laughs> is illegal uh, in all guilds. You can be punished for that by the guild, uh, and if the guild escalates it, you can be punished by the city. Are you, Wait, is she saying this to me? No, I'm telling you this. Okay. Well, I have no intention of committing fraud, so we're good. Okay. Forgery of an official document. Official punishment. Flogging and exile for ten summers. What the fuck? Hell yeah. They don't fuck around. I'll be, I'll be uh, glad for the vacation. I put uh, the code legal in the Google Doc. Uh, I highlighted it in orange <laughs> if anybody wants to read it. <laughs> Espionage, death, and permanent exile. Oh. Right. Okay. Death or um, permanent exile. You don't die and then get permanent <laughs> exile. Not even your ghost can come back to the city. <laughs> oh, using magic to influence an official, <laughs> such as with a suggestion spell. Fine or damages of up to 1,000 silver shards. All right, so what did you want to say to the secretary again? I'm just asking for whoever's in charge. Uh, she says, well, uh, do you want to schedule something like this and look at an official contract? You know what? I'll go get the Ward Guild Master here. And, you know, that's not like the the Sweeper's Guild big boss, but it is, like, one of his lieutenants. Uh, that is The person perfectly... in charge of the whole ward. ward. That is perfectly fine. <laughs> Shall I wait here? Uh, uh, yes, she actually says, uh, well, he'll take the meeting in his office. Uh, are all of you coming? Yes, these are my bodyguards. Excellent. Oh, so. You'll see Huel, like, munching on a, a piece of watermelon. <laughs> yeah, uh, hold up. <laughs> Persuasion check, or deception check, uh, with disadvantage. Uh... You said disadvantage? Yes, I did. Huel is so happy right now. Why can't you guys be, like, well-groomed? It's a one. Ooh. Nice. The thing, she deception says, was meant to be, like, my good skill. And she says, yeah, what are you doing? Staff, I know that someone like you may look down on what we do here, covered in the filth and grime of this city, but we are noble here, noble in our spirit, and we are not here for you to make jokes or waste our time. Please... You and your group of ruffians, turn around and go another way. Madam, you are insulting a castle lanter. I will have your name and your job if you do not get me this meeting. As I said, they are my body guards. I did not say that they were official. I did not say that they had to be pristine. They are here to keep me safe, and they do their job fine. You Shall I go to one... your boss? You got a one on that deception chat, dude. She knows you're lying. She knows you're up to something. It's her job to make sure that people don't waste company time. Two, when you say, I'm a castle enter, I'll have your job. She laughs at you. I'm going to walk past her. She goes, sir, sir, you are not allowed back there. Your family has no claim to this uh, guild hall. Yet. That's, that's not how guilt falls for her. <laughs> <laughs> her private business. They're kind of kicking y'all's ass right now. They make, uh, I guess I haven't explained this, but it's like, uh, like that early mercantile period of capitalism where like guilds yeah. and like, we're like oh, getting more powerful than the nobles. So you're yeah. in that kind of economic situation. 
Um, so when she says that you're not allowed back there, she's not just saying that you're really not allowed back there. Are you really doing this? No, uh, I would I would not have walked past her. I need the John Cena. Are you sure about that uh, sound effect? Yeah, no. Uh, all right. Well, shit. Uh, I mean, I have an alternative alternative idea, but it's not a good one. I'm gonna grab the boys and usher to the door if no one's gonna stop me. No, I know the guild won't, but I'm at the party. You. Um, we could always stake out the, uh, museum. Like, I'm assuming we're outside when I'm saying this. Yes. We can always stake out the museum and find out whoever is going to be going in from the Sweepers Guild. And, um, persuade him to help us. Hmm. I guess that'll be our only... Viable option. No, oh, we could break in. Yes, but it seems to be kind of I hard just to traveled break months in. to traveled months to get here. I don't want to get arrested on the first second day. You could also go in there while the gala's active. We do have tickets. Not, not every gala. alarm. Yeah, not every alarm is turned on. You know, while the museum's open. Just the areas that were locked, you know? Uh, afterwards, they would have more alarms up. Yes, but if there's also a cleaning crew going in, it stands to reason that most of the alarms would be turned off so they don't trigger them until after they leave. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. I'm just letting you know. So... So... I, I think... I think the, the, I guess, like I said, the viable way of doing this is probably uh, wait for the sweeper skill, but the gala is the other option as well, and then, but well, we have like a day or so, right? So our, our contract's complete in the supposed end of the world. Mm-hmm. Uh... But what do you all? What 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 do all the others think here? Because I, I think like the smart way of doing it is probably waiting for this, you know sweepers guild. But I mean, whenever this guild comes by, I can I can you know be invisible and try to follow them. See if I can uh, try to find us an advantage. Can't think of any other uh, angles on this at the moment. Mm-hmm. Well, the plan was to bribe the cleaner to just leave the alarm off. Because he's meant to come in, turn it off, they do the cleaning, and he turns it back on. And Is it just one guy? Well, I'm assuming there's a group of them, but he himself is the one who's meant to do it. The rest are just cleaners. Yeah, there would be like a group of people and then one sorcerer that deals with alarms. I mean, money talks in this city, so we could try it. I don't, I don't see the problem with that. Well, that's why I'm assuming we find out who he is. Offer him the bribe. He says no, then we force him. Yeah. Because let's be real, what is one sorcerer compared to the five of us? Four of us. Well, uh, a low sorcerer. A cleaner. All the guards, and then it'd be the entire city on against us. But I don't see any other options at this moment. Yeah, there, there isn't really a good. The other option is try to sneak in during, you know, the gala and get the stone. But of course, there's going to be people there, so that'll be tricky. Um, 
and then the after hours would be you know, the sweet sleeping guild and they'll uh they'll be the ones that are typically cleaning and you know with little guard problems so i think it's the best option considering Do you know how close that sweeper will get to this uh, egg we need to steal? He's going to disenchant it. Yeah. For them to clean it. Okay. Now, just an idea. I can be invisible, and I can try to sneak with them until we get to this egg. Now, whenever they disenchant, I can grab it and run. And just bolt for the door. Now uh, jump in the sewers and run. What is it with you in eh? sewers? No one else wants to go in the poop. I, I mean, can do he it. He has a point. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, do you think the, the stone, the Merkmire stone, weighs between eighty and one hundred and twenty pounds? I don't think <laughs> I can do it. I don't think you can do it. No. <laughs> yeah, you'd have to roll a strength check every turn. Yeah, you what if we were I to go, first, I'm good. What if we were to go and acquire that briefcase of holding and you were to say uh, yeah. put you, the stone You don't have to it? acquire it. You have it. That's right. We have it. What if you were to use this? <laughs> don't have to carry the stone if you can carry this. Ooh. You can follow them in. Grab the stone when he unlocks it. It'll just disappear. Yeah, nothing and can go wrong. I'll... Seeing how I've already made a ruckus about the stone's security, I'm going to have to put myself into a position to be uh, seen by others. Now, was it there a, f a false stone? There is a false stone. We could swap it if possible. But would y'all like me to switch back to the museum map view? I mean, I'm good. Up to them. Yeah, I don't worry. I'm gonna uh, go ahead and do it. All right. Um, I was thinking if we're going to do this during the cleaning, I can make my way to the yawning portal. Mm -hmm. You know buy a round of drinks or something so people are blatantly aware of I'm here. That way, when we get the stone, and in the morning, when you come to uh, retrieve me, <clears throat> uh, after handing it off to the professor, if the guards come looking for me, I'll have plenty of witnesses. And I can truthfully say I had nothing to do with the stealing of that stone because I in no way had any hand in the actual act of stealing it. Now, the only problem I got is I don't see me stealing this egg and being able to get out as stealthy as getting to it. I can run. I will bolt. But problems you might happened there you said you could go into the sewer yes yes and I, I will try to get there but isn't this egg on the second floor there are secret okay so I'm going to start drawing out uh, a map on some parchment I have so you guys see the uh, map of the museum right now yeah yep all right so I'm gonna go to the second floor on the like start drawing the second floor and i'm going to say so there's a s two secret doors here hey real quick i just want to remind y'all there's also that skylight in the attic and there's also other valuables in the museum there were the tools that are a plus one dagger plus one hand axe plus one pickaxe and then the various shops around that you saw gold coins get put into also, all the guards have plus one leather armor and plus one short swords or spears. Oh, 
Okay. Uh, so yes, there's the skylight that you can get in if you have to, or get out if you have to. But on the second floor, there are two secret passages here and here. Okay. From what and... I saw, they did not appear ar uh, alarmed or locked. All you have to do is give them a good nudge. And, they'll and, th and this eldritch egg is supposed to be right over here? That's the fake one. Yeah, that's the fake that one. That's the fake one. The real one I is over that. here. What you want to do is if you follow the cleaner up the stairs, you'll come up, take a left through the first door. He should unlock it. Once you're in, at the end of the room, ignore all the tables. Except for the pedestal. That'll have a big green rock on it. Mm -hmm. You see, I, I tripped an alarm today. I do not like that alarm. So I think the best option would be to follow the sweeper as he enters all the way to the egg. Yes, Going out is... of the museum is where I am. I want ideas, suggestions, because I am going to need to bolt as soon as I grab that egg. Well, depending what happens, there's two things you can do. You can make your way back down and just run through the front door. Mm -hmm. Or, I'm assuming there are windows here. Where? Uh, oh, south of the pedestal. Uh, uh, it's not letting me ping right here. Yeah. Uh, no, there are no windows there. The only natural light that y'all saw was coming from the unearthed uh, Arcana uh, Cafe. Okay. And those so windows you... there were very small. There were just a lot of them, so they let in uh, a lot of light. Okay. But Inchi's pretty small too. Is it? Is it too small for him? And a goblin. He's three foot tall. It would be a very difficult squeeze, uh, maybe. You'd have to mm. know way to know until you do it. Okay, it's a possibility. I'd rather not uh, get stuck in that thing, but uh, things go bad, I might just try to jump it. But if no one else has any other ideas, I'll just bolt right back out that door. And remember, there's there's uh, an attic way too, if need be. Yes, you can also escape via the attic. Um, off the roof of the museum, were there any lines or anything that lead to smaller houses? Uh, no, the villa museum. It's kind of surrounded on all sides by greenery and uh, small decorative trees. I mean, you could always jump into a shrub. Yeah, there's a line of shrubbery around the museum. Aim for the bushes. But, um... Uh, if, if you're jumping off the top floor, if the ceilings <laughs> are 30 feet high, uh, shit, that'd be uh, 90 feet. Yeah, that's gonna hurt. A lot. Mm. Holy shit, that's absurd. This cannot be 90 feet high. But the 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 ceiling is half the height uh, on the attic, so it's seventy five feet. I believe your best bet would be to take the stone quietly after they disenchant it, and they aren't looking. Well, Proceed mm. to sneak out as best as you can to the front door, where the rest of the party can either A, cause a distraction, or B, assist in the getaway. My my tall friend, I, I would love to do it that way. But I, why would they be cleaning this egg and then be not looking at it at any point? I would love to grab it and sneak out. I don't want to run. But... I, that seems to be my only option, unless I can have that disruption, that interruption, before I can grab that egg. 
Well, Seems that's like a lot why of we're discussing cheats. this plan in order to rule stuff out like that, which was an oversight, my little friend. Yes, we sh should cause a distraction when you're in there. That is a great idea. Okay. Do you have was a there question? any? Hmm. Was there any windows near this egg? I could, uh... They had a bunch of latrines, or privies, in the second floor. I could clog them. What? Say, oh, dear. I must have ate some bad watermelons this morning. I'm going to come running to the privies and see them all clogged up. Why that... would you be allowed in during the closed hours when they're trying to clean... Do a, do a, do a, do a pre-game shit. <laughs> Just... I was thinking of this earlier, but I was distracted <laughs> by something. Um, okay. Maybe we could hit up some tailors around. Maybe like a, a clothing shop. Maybe they deal with like the city guards. Maybe say, hey, look, you know, we're, we're picking up a shipment for... What was that? I'm going to nudge... Uh, Death Strain and say what? What was her name? Who? Alda Arkin. Big cheese. Yeah, Thank yeah. You. We'll say, we'll say we're picking up clothes for Alda, and then pick up some guard outfits, and that could be our excuse why we're in during the the closed hours. They gotta have some dry cleaners, or you know. Mm -hmm. we, we could do that. Or, what I was kind of thinking is we could phage a heist within a heist. What? Maybe have, maybe have, while I'm inside and I'm by the egg, have a couple of you that's outside the museum try to break into the front entrance, not so sneakily like. Maybe get the attention of some guards? Eh? I mean, so they may, may be distracted while I grab the egg, and I can try to sneak out while there's some ruckus. I like My it. issue with that would be that it would put the rest of us into the spotlight. The idea is to do this without any of us being known. And if the goal is to distract them and get caught, they're going to know who had a part in it. I made you jump in the sewer. What about if I toss a gold to some low life to do a ding dong ditch to the door? You know, after hours, like, you know, here, have a couple of gold and they'll fucking, I don't know, throw some eggs at the door and knock the door like madmen and try to pretend that they're, you know, opening the door or some mm -hmm. shit. You know, I could have some uh, eager, eager low lowlifes down the Xanathar Guild. I don't know if you've heard of them, but I've got a got a bit of an in with them. Oh, could that's... find a, a low life cheap enough to do this, cause a ruckus and run. Yeah, if they want gold. Let yeah, you know, let them know. I'll, I'll, I'll you know fork up like oh. two, three gold. I was going to say, why don't we get some nobodies to actually perform a heist? We could do that, Give too. Give them, say, a couple gold here or there, whatever. Mm. All we want them to do is break in and steal the t uh, some tools. True. You said there was uh, tools in that one room. Yep, there are tools all over here. Various mm. types. You could so do we that. get them to go in, cause a ruckus, while you sneak in with the cleaner, grab the stone, and while they're escorting them out, you just leave. Have the stone disappear during a failed burglary. I like okay. that idea. I like that idea. Or, I'm going to dig around in my uh, my backpack. Ah, uh, yes. 
I have a rope. I'm gonna hand you the rope and put it in the suitcase. You can always go to the attic after you take the crystal and descend from the roof mm. via rope. I... Rooftop is a last resort, please. Um, but I will keep that in mind. Don't like heights. I don't like <laughs> heights. <laughs> uh, but I'll keep it in mind. This is an option. But I believe we have the basics of a plan. Um, thoughts, suggestions... Well, I mean, we can pick up low lives anywhere. Um, I'm just had to say, but you want some money? You, I've heard there's some stuff over here, uh, you know. Throw in, like, I don't know, let's say five gold to the heist. And I'm telling you, the Xanathar Guild, there could be some uh, eager fellows. And have to look. Would you want to get uh, some people that you're associated with caught in a blatant trap? Well, I associate the with them, and I got caught. Maybe they owe me a favor. <laughs> I like your thinking. Well, it's not here, here's my idea. You inquire about that, then. And you two go find us some group of people who are willing to do it. Uh, no questions asked. Obviously, don't let them see your identity. Or, like, your face. Don't let them be able to ID you. Yep. And... Yeah. Sounds like a plan. We can all regroup prior to closing and discuss what we found. And if we can get multiple groups to do it, all the better. Okay. So do not got... concern yourselves with the thought of did these like did uh, the other group find people to do it? If they did, perfect. If you did as well, even better. Because the more people causing a distraction the more likely we are to get this done. But they have to be uh, aware that it has to be done tonight. Prior to the gala. Will do, boss man. Uh, let me go to just jump in the sewer right here, and I will go start asking. I will see you all later. I don't we want it after, kinda... after, uh, after the gala, when, when the sorcerer shows up, or is it before? It's before. Because he's going to do the cleaning prior oh, to the gala. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, no. It oh. is the cleaning after the gala. There you they go. do it at around 1 a.m. Gala starts tonight at 7, goes to 10. Then it's normal security. Then the cleaning crew comes in at 1. They work their way through the museum. They leave at 3. The museum opens to the public at 10. Okay. I mean, we can also go in during the gala and scope everything out even more. True. Then. So, yeah, we're going to have to... Sounds like your plan would work during the gala as well, just for yeah. the record. All right. Hmm. So, real quick, it's about 11.20. Last time we stopped at 11. I feel if we played for about 20-ish more minutes, we could get to right before the heist starts, and that'd be a good stopping point. But we can stop now if people need to. Uh, I am getting very hungry. Okay. <laughs> I don't okay. know about the others. Yeah, maybe we could like, plan the heist a bit more thoroughly, too. Like, Yeah, we could, we could talk more. We and stuff like that. Yeah, we, could talk yeah, more we just hammered out the plan. I, mean, I think this is a good, good stopping point. Yeah. And she like just left too, right? So that could be something to come back to, like. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
we have a recording of this session. Right? Yes. I yeah, yeah. told you all a lot of details and y'all just made a plan. So yeah. I will re-listen to that as soon as it's available. I'll write up every security detail y'all found. And I will also write up y'all's plan and uh, the timetable for uh, the next two days of the museum. And I'll be sure to post all that in chat. And y'all can have a plan ready to go. Uh, and we can do your little role play things with the Xanathar Guild and finding some vagabonds. And then we'll do the museum heist next time. All right. Okay. Sounds good. Oh, yeah. All right, everybody. This was great. Uh, I really felt like y'all came together as a group on this one. Uh, very smart. Y'all found out a bunch of stuff. Um, I think this is going to be a fun heist. Yeah, I apologize again for showing up a little little late. That's oh, okay. You almost uh, killed the character's neck. Like Some guy walked in the tavern and was going to snap his neck. And then I stopped him, so you're welcome. I, I greatly appreciate that, Kirby. I'm going to insight check that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just kidding. Um, I yeah, wouldn't do that. Next week is the, the wrestling event thing, so we may have to skip that, because I know me and at least me and Kirby would watch that. Um, so the week after be good. We'll see. Um, okay. I think that's fine. I'll keep you all updated on that, but I'll see who will raid and uh, I'll upload the video shortly like you know before I sleep tonight and it should be available afterwards on YouTube all right. I'll send you all the link afterwards and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and raid let's raid 51 Grims he hasn't I haven't seen him on in a while he's playing deadlock let's say hello to him uh, what did the I wanted to note that I did set up in She Being Scared of Heights from the first episode, first session. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll be honest, I completely forgot. <laughs> it's fine. I, That's I why I was asking. trying to remember, like, what yeah, happened just, with the just meeting like you I had. completely forgot you fucking had a session today, too. No, wow. I didn't no. forget. <laughs> I kind of forgot to set an alarm. Yeah, that's I'm a just messing with you, bro. <laughs> All right, uh, let me read you all out, and again, the video will be up on YouTube shortly. Until next time, folks, later. Yes, sir, I'll check it out, and I intend not to. See you guys. Later.